Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and this is the official afternoon live fight reaction for Conor Ben versus UC Covula, live from your call. We'll be live here on True School Sports. You guys give me one second to set up, but you guys leave your comments down below, and I promise I'll get to you in a timely manner. Let me let me just make sure I set up my thumbnail because I'm using my uh, I'm using the better app so we don't crash. Because you guys know sometimes when I do these lives, when I go ahead and just start doing these lives, sometimes. You know, when I go live from the YouTube app, you guys have seen it many a times. For those of you who watch my lives consistently, you've seen it many a times where I go live and, 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 and crash, crash, crash and burn, you know, and it kicks me out and, and then you guys say, oh, well, the thing froze and, you know, we, we don't want to have that today. So I'm going live through the, uh, through this other app that I use, but some, you know, the, the app requires me to go on the, go on the back end and pretty much... Uh, put, the, put the thumbnail in, do all that good stuff. So you guys drop your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button like it was your ex-girlfriend. And I'm sure many people who are watching this can identify with that because many of us have went ahead and did that. But... <coughs> <coughs> Jesus, coughing. But um, I'm going to go set this thumbnail because you got to make sure this video looks somewhat presentable. Um, but yeah, you guys give me uh, your comments down below on this fight card. It, it should be a good one. I, you know, this week, I'll be honest with you guys, this week... The fight cards have snuck up on me because there really haven't been many big fights. Um, we have this the zone card, which I think has been underrated. To be honest with you, this one has been underrated because you have, um, you know, you have Conor Ben um, trying to make a name in his career. And, you know, he's had some tough fights. You know, he had hit that one war at your your call that journeyman, in which he almost lost. Um, so he's trying to write the shit and, and and do and do good for his career. Um, you know. And, like Other, Other Jones the third, who's a, a, a fantastic, um, he was a fantastic American amateur. He's making his UK debut. I'm very excited to see Other Jones the third because I've seen a lot and heard a lot about Other Jones the third. This will actually be even even though he's an American and I've heard a lot about him, I haven't really had a chance to see him for myself. So today, today will be my first impression of Other Jones the third. For those of you wondering why I'm not in the shot right now, why you see a chair, I'm I'm right now I'm editing the back end of um, the video. So that that's why I'm doing this, you know. Um, my main man blocked the box. What's up, champ? Della Rocha, how you doing, champ? You got question marks there. What what, what question do you have? Uh, for those of you wondering what card this is, uh, there's an afternoon card on the zone right, for for fights going on in the UK. Um, you got Conor Ben fighting UC Co I don't know how to say Cobula, and that's the main event. You got uh, Ova Jones the third. Making his um, at, you know, one of the top American pro amateurs, he's making his U uh, UK debut. You got Craig Richards and Andre Sterling, which I think could be the fight of the day because there's two fight cards today. This, this is this, for those of you uh, uh, wondering, this is actually actually going to be my first of two lives for today. So you, you so you can expect another live today when we go live for uh, the rematch between uh, Alberto Machado and Andrew Cancio. And as, as many of you may know, uh, Cancio folded Machado off like a chair in the last fight. Reaction from today. No, no, I'm from of. of. See, so you guys drop your comments down below. Hit that, hit that like button. Make sure you support of today's uh, UK fight card at York York Hall. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna go make sure that we go. Straighten out that thumbnail, and then I'm gonna talk to you guys. Let me see. Block the box that says "Tell Eddie to put you on the payroll." Why are you saying that, champ? Why? Well, why, 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 why? Is that like? Do you mean that in a bad way or a good way? Like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, I, I ain't gonna be. I mean, I wouldn't even be mad if Eddie put me on the payroll. I wouldn't be mad. I, I, I could use some money, you know. Ain't no such thing as too much money. Straight up, never have too much money. Money, money gives you options. Eddie Hearn though, Eddie Hearn, I mean, I like him as a promoter, but he be tripping and like, he don't be responding to me on Instagram, so, and he, and he follows me on Instagram, but then, and then he watches my story sometimes, so I get pissed off with Eddie Hearn sometimes when I, um, when I have a deal with him, you know? But it is what it is. Oh, block means in a good way. Well, I appreciate that. He should put me on the payroll because, I mean, not, not to be disrespectful to any anybody who's on television, but I feel like if I was on television, I'd be, I'd be the best. Straight up, number one commentator up in this mofo. Straight up. 
But I mean, I, I, I like I like where I'm at. I like doing stuff with True School Sports. I like um, doing stuff with you guys, for you guys. Um, I like where I'm at. You know, I wouldn't really trade where I'm at for to work with the zone. To be honest with you. Now, if they want to sponsor, if they want to drop a donation, I, I ain't gonna be mad at that. I, I like the zone. I'm the zone subscriber, but sometimes their their uh, their their streams are horrible. I'm not gonna lie to you. Sometimes, you know. So they they need, they need to improve their OTT technology. Whatever, whatever the fuck it's called. All right. So I'm gonna sit down here in a second. You guys give me one second. We're gonna we're gonna run through the card. We're gonna run through the card real quickly. I wanna I wanna give you guys a proper rundown. Hold on. A proper rundown of the whole fight card. So for those of you who don't know what's going on with this fight card, you'll know what's going on. So Ah, uh, here we are. Six minutes in. Your boy BT. Live and in color. Let me bring this up right here as close to me as possible so I can see the chat. You know, so if you want to chat now, now is a good time to chat because I, I can see what you guys are saying. All right, so let's run through the card. All right, so um, we'll start from the bottom and work our way up. Uh, we have Charles Frankham, one and zero. I know he's a prospect that was recently signed to um, the zone and match room. He's uh, looking to just build his record up to two and zero. He's fighting a guy who's one and four. Uh, I can't even pronounce Gavaris Krakulis, one and four. Sounds like an Eastern European guy. You got Shannon Courtney, you know, probably the one of the. I'm not sure if, if Natasha Jones is, Jonas is signed a, a match room, but if she's not, then Shannon Courtney is definitely the the biggest uh, female fighter that they have. So Eddie's gonna look to promote her. Uh, she's looking to run, run her record up to three and zero today in a showcase fight against uh, Valjeria Sep Sepetovska, something like that. She, she's zero and one. Okay, now. Um, Fight after that, you have Otha Jones III, who was, for those of you who don't know, Otha Jones III, he's an American, he's a yank, he's a proper yank, as many of you Brits would say. Otha Jones III was one of the top American amateurs. Uh, he got a lot of hype here in America, um, in the boxing community, in the boxing scene here, winning all kinds of national championships, Golden Gloves, Nationals, all that stuff. He's, the, he's won it all. Um, he's, this will be his second, his second professional fight. And um, he's looking to make a statement in his UK debut. You know, I, I find it interesting, you know, because most of the times the, the UK fighters are trying to come to America to make their American debut. But now here's an interesting, an interesting scenario where we have an American fighter going to the UK very early in his career to make an impression with the UK fans. So you got to respect Ola Jones III for that. Uh, he's fighting against Michael Harabin, who's 2-11, and 11, so it's a showcase fight for him. You have uh, Dwayne Sinclair, 10-0, who'll be fighting Anthony Fox, 7-12-4. There's that. You have uh, Ted Cheeseman, fresh off of his loss to Sergio Garcia. He fights Kieran Conway, who was 12 and one. So that's a, you know, that should be an interesting fight. That'll be for the uh, British title, the British Super Welterweight title. So I heard the winner of this fight could go into a fight with Anthony Fowler. So the winner of this fight might be fighting, uh, or no, not Anthony Fowler, Scott Fitzgerald. So there's that. And then the, the fight of the card for me is Andre Sterling versus uh, Craig Richards. Two. Really good fighters, at, uh, British level fighters at light heavyweight, looking to make a, an impression in the light heavyweight division and, and move past that British level, kind of ascend. So that that would be a good fight. There's been a lot of trash talking to build up to this fight. And then you have Conor Ben uh, against UC Corvula for the uh, WBA Continental World Title. So that's the card. Not too much to not not too much to, uh, too many uh, crazy matchups, but I, I wanted to go live for it because. Uh, it's, it's boxing, you know, it's boxing and, you know, it'll be a good way to talk to you guys. So you guys, let me know, drop your comments down below. If you're watching the card, let me know what city, what state, what continent you're from. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'll definitely be sure to uh, shout you guys out. So, yeah, rep represent where you're from. Let me know where you guys are watching from. If you're, you know, if you're watching right now, smash that like button. I'll shout you guys out if you do mention where you're from. And I'll shout your city out. So drop your city down below. All right, right now, the first fight on the card is scheduled to start. Charles Frankham. So the first fight on the card is Charles Frankham. He's looking to uh Charles Frankham. Hmm. 
For those of you who are wondering where the fight is taking place, this fight is taking place at the famed York Hall. Uh, York Hall is probably, the, of the smaller venues in the UK, it's probably the best one. It's probably the one with the most prestige. So this is one of those uh, next generation shows that Eddie Hearn likes to do. Those uh, showcase shows that, uh, you know, at, at your call. So I'm looking forward to seeing how these fights play out. Because sometimes you watch these cards and you don't expect a lot. Like you don't expect there to be classic fights. And you look at the records of some of the opponents. And you don't think it's going to be a big fight. But that, like last, um, last year, Conor Ben had that war with that journeyman. And it was, a, it was one of the fights of the year. So you just never know. I'm going to the UK in December. And I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely hoping that. In December of next uh, of this year, that Eddie Hearn does a show at your call. I really want to go to a show at your call. So right now, the first fight on the card is uh, Charles Frankham looking to run his record up to two and zero. And um, you know, it should be it should kick off what should be a good day of boxing. For those of you wondering, for those of you who are watching, um, this is the first of two lives that I will be having today. I will be live later on tonight with my father, my dad will be alongside me, as we go live for the Alberto Machado Andrew Cancio rematch. That's also on the zone. And then tomorrow, uh, I believe uh, Brandon Adams fighting Jamal Charlo, so I'll be live for that as well. Um, I'll be live a lot. I'll be a lot, alive a lot over the next couple days. So if you if y'all like the lives, make sure you support. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Keep supporting True School Sports. I want to give you guys. I want to give you guys um, who are here right now a massive shout out. Just a massive, massive shout out. Um, as I just hit 20,000 subscribers yesterday, big milestone. You know, it's been a long time coming. I think I would have been there a lot earlier if I didn't speak the truth so damn much. But um, we got there nonetheless. The road's been hard. But um, I'm really excited to hit 20,000 subscribers. You know, I work really hard on this YouTube stuff. I really enjoy it. I enjoy the interaction. I enjoy the, um, the people I get to meet in boxing. So just thank you guys for all the support. And we're going to enjoy a, a, an afternoon of boxing here on the zone, here in South Florida, here in my hotel room. Sheehy, what's up, champ? How you doing? Good to see you, man. Right now we're uh, we're live for the for the for the card on the zone, the afternoon card on the zone. There's a there's a there's a showcase card at York Hall. Uh, you got Connor Ben on that card. You got uh, Andre Sterling versus Craig Richards, which I think will be a good British fight. Um, you got uh, what's his name? Ofa Jones the third, top top American amateur. He's making his UK debut in a second professional fight. And right now we got um Charles Frankham, second professional fight. You know, a prospect that we've been told many, many a times to look out for. So here we are on True School Sports looking out for him. But let me know what you think, Shihi. Uh, I'm going to be live later on tonight as well with my dad for the Alberto Machado Andrew Can See rematch. But until then, we're going to enjoy this uh, UK card. Fuck, man. Come on, Dazone. Don't, don't trail me today, Dazone. All right, so Charles Franco in the black trunks with the red trim. Igor's, whatever his name is, he's in the blue trunks with the white trim. This is a four-rounder, a fight at featherweight. Charles Frankham looking to uh, run his record up and just, and just continue to push on onwards and upwards with his boxing career. Good jab there from the journeyman. Just, just got Frankham there. One thing, if you look at Frankham, the way he stands, if you're watching right now, Frankham, he stands very upright like this. And um, you know he he's, he 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 gets good, he moves very good on his toes, but um, I'm in, I'm interested to see if, if this guy could actually uh, change change the angle of where Frankham looks, you know, jab to the stomach, bring those eyes down, and come up top. I, I hope this guy can test him a little bit. But you know, it, in a fight where you're where you're fighting a guy that's a second professional fight, um, you know, you, you can't expect you can't expect it to be too tough. Uh, my main man, Michael Kenneth, says, do you only drink Zephyr Hills water? Actually, what's funny, Michael, is I hate, Ze I hate Zephyr Hills water. Zephyr Hills is like the worst water in the world, but it's the only water I have right now. So let's make it do what it do. I like, personally, I like smart water. I like uh, uh, Aquafina. I like Dasani. But, you know, we make it do what it do with the Zephyr Hills. <laughs> but when you, look at, uh, when you look at Charles Frankham, you see uh, he's got good... Oh, dang, okay. Charles Frankham just scored a knockdown. He gets hit this guy with a with a long jab and a right hand down the pipe. Bang! 
And now this guy, this guy's not getting up. This guy's not getting up. And there you have it. A first round stoppage. A, a, a brutal first round stoppage for Charles Franklin over uh, this journeyman, this one and four fighter he's fought. And it's the first knockdown. It's the first knock, uh, first knockout of uh, Charles Franklin's career. So now he, he improves his um, record to a uh, 2-0 and oh, one knockout. So, you know, big shout out to Charles Franklin. You know, you can't get too hyped over a, a, a win against a fighter like that, but it's, it's always good to, 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 to knock someone out, get your first professional stoppage out the way. Um, and just, just like, well, well, as they would say in the UK, it's just a tickover fight, you know, a, a stay busy fight. So not much to make a Charles, Charles Franklin second professional fight, but uh, a well-executed jab and a right hand that landed right on the equilibrium of his opponent. And uh, he gets a first round stoppage and uh, runs record up to uh, two and zero. So big shout out to uh, Charles Franklin. Yeah, that, that was quick. It was quick. Like he comes, he kind of he kind of changes levels a bit. He throws the jab up top and then bang, right hand on the equilibrium, and that's what it was. So um, I'm not I'm not I'm not making too much of it. I'm not getting I'm not getting hype about it. But uh, you know, good for Charles Franklin. Um, yeah, Michael Kenneth, Fiji water is good too. You know, you're right. I I I I will sleep on that Fiji water. Fiji water is amazing. I I love me a good Fiji water every now and then. Fur loves Gia Mendes. BT say there's only one Tyson Fury. There's only one Tyson Fury. We're singing a song. Walking in a Fury Wonderland. So, what's your amateur record, Michael Kenneth? Well, Michael, I never fought as an amateur, so I'll, I'll be real with you. I never fought as an amateur, but I had plenty of ring experience. I've sparred countless amounts of rounds. Um, I would say I, I've sparred a couple hundred rounds at least, but I, I never officially had an amateur fight. It's just something I just didn't do. Um, I had to support myself, so I didn't have time to be an amateur fighter, and I couldn't dedicate myself to the sport the way I wanted to. But I found this. I found doing YouTube. I like doing YouTube, so that's my way I support myself, and, and I, I enjoy it quite, 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 quite a lot. So I didn't have any amateur fights, but I do love boxing. I respect fighters. I respect fighters getting in the ring, and, and that's why I do this. I, I really feel like boxers are the most noble and amazing athletes out there, and I don't feel like boxing properly gets covered in America. So that, that's actually why I started covering YouTube in the first place. But I never had any amateur fights. But you know, it's funny. Riddick Bowe and Evander Holyfield tell me all the time at the gym. When, when I do go there, they say, you should have an amateur fight at least one time. Have, have an amateur fight. They always tell me I should because they, they say I have the talent to be a decent fighter. So, She says, I saw you on Twitter with the Ioka result. You think Roma could fight Ioka now? I actually just made a video about the Ioka fight. It, um, I'm going to drop it probably tomorrow uh, or within the coming days. Um, in the video, I stated that I think Roman should fight Ioka next. Uh, I think Ioka would be a good fight for him. Ioka's a, 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 good, a, a good fighter, but he's not unbeatable. Um, so I think, I think it'd be a good fight. I would favor Roman Gonzalez because Roman Gonzalez is of higher quality, but you know, I, I don't think Ioka is going to get blown out by Roman Gonzalez, so I'd like to see that fight. You know? I think I say he wins that fight, and then he can go into a unification fight with Estrada. You know? Also, you need to stay together with your dad sometime or have him do it. Yeah, I, I will. If you're going to be here live later on, because um, I'm going to be live later on for the um, Alberto Machado versus Andrew Can See a rematch. If you see me live later when my dad is here, remind me and I'll, I'll have him do it. Michael Kent said, you're never too old to start. Now nah, you're right about that. You're definitely right. Who knows? I might. I might. Right now, I'm just focused on getting my money up, man. I, I, I don't really need to worry about fighting. Get my money up and... Grinding with this boxing thing on YouTube, staying in decent shape, but I'm not, um, not, I'm, it's not my immediate to do list. But I do enjoy boxing, I do enjoy training, um, I do enjoy like the confidence boxing gives you, sparring and going in the ring. I enjoy the adrenaline rush, so you know, I, I, maybe at some point I will. There is a problem connecting to your network, you may have to check your network settings, please try again. You gotta be bullshitting me. Here we go, the zone. The zone fuck on me already. We're not even two fights in the zone. I'm telling you, the zone, you tri you're tripping today. I'm not a big fan of how the zone is acting right now. Let's see. Let's 
singing a song, walking in the Piri Lund land. Oh, just so you guys know, um, I want I want to give you guys an update on some videos that you should expect to see really soon. Um, recently, hold on. Uh, recently, and I want to give a big shout out. He might be here later on. I want to give a big shout out to um, my main man, Phantom Brawler. If you guys don't haven't heard of a YouTube channel called Phantom Brawler. Please go subscribe to him. Go subscribe to my friend Alex at Fran at Phantom Brawler. Uh, he's a, he's a, a really good friend of mine. He's he's only, he's, he's only got like 218 subscribers right now. But please, please go subscribe to him. We had a one hour and 12 minute uh, chat about boxing the other day. I'll be uploading it soon on my channel because um, Alex has very different uh, views than I do about boxing. Uh, Phantom Brawler. His channel name is Phantom Brawler. So go go check out Phantom Brawler. He's in my chat sometimes. Go check him out. Um, me and him had a very big debate about, um, we talked about some upcoming fights, you know, Pacquiao, Thurman, but uh, the, the main part of what we were talking about, we, we were talking about Deontay Wilder and uh, racism in boxing, and um, is racism in boxing affecting Deontay Wilder? He had his own viewpoints, which were that racism is affecting Deontay Wilder. I stated that Deontay, uh, racism isn't affecting Deontay Wilder, that people, people, don't, people don't like Wilder because he's a knobhead, and he's someone that ducks fights. Um, and then we talked. We also talked about the LDBC, and because he's like he's Mexican, he's a Mexican guy. Even though he looks kind of white, he's Mexican, and he's like an unofficial member of the LDBC. So we talked about the LDBC, and he was explaining to me why he likes the LDBC. I was explaining to the I was explaining to him why I think the LDBC are piss stains on boxing. So, you know, it was all good, man. It was all love. That that video should be coming out within the coming days. It was one hour and 12 minutes of boxing discussion. And I think I'm going to start doing that soon. I think on my YouTube channel, I'm going to start actually... I'm going to start doing more like one hour conversations with people, like subscribers and stuff. So if y'all ever want to talk boxing for like an hour, we can run through all kinds of topics. I might start doing that once a week. Let's, let, let's get us some comments. My man, HG13. Um... What up, man? Let's go, champ. I miss HBO Boxing. Yeah, I miss HBO Boxing, too. The presentation was second to none. Um, do a bomb squat and simultaneously do the right hand. Wait, do the, the lock and load right hand? Okay. Bomb squat! Let's go, champ! Shout out to Deontay Wilder. Bomb squat. Why are they showing Kelly Fai? Is Kelly Fai fighting? Yo, I'm sick of Kelly Fai. I wish, I wish, I wish Eddie Ham would get that boy out of witness protection and let Roman Gonzalez put him out of his misery. Most irrelevant champion in British boxing. In Birmingham, my hometown, which is brilliant. Birmingham's a big city. He's from Birmingham. To be Birmingham's first ever world champion and to bring world championship boxing back to Birmingham is a big thing. I'm proud of that. Don't do what. Don't do what, uh, Sheehy. Don't do what? Hold on. So right now, for those of you wondering what's going on with this the zone card, uh, right now they're, they're, they're talking to Cal Yafai. They're showing a Cal Yafai thing. I think they got a fight coming up soon. They're trying to promote him. But we don't do what, Sheehy? And then we went to Monaco. Wait, when the best night. Mohammed said, man, answer me. Okay, well, what are you, what are you asking me, Mohammed? I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the comments. I don't see anything you're asking me. What what do you what's your question, Mohammed? I'll I'll answer if you ask the question. You're damn right, snack time. You know they ain't sponsoring me, but but big shout out to the fine folks at Cliff Bars, Cliff Energy Bars. Got that peanut butter crunch energy bar. See what I'm saying? Yo, Cal Your Fire is like the uh, Cal Your Fire is like the uh, Deontay Wilder of flyweight. This guy has been champion longer than everybody else, and he's talking about, oh, I want to unify the division. Motherfucker, unify the division already. So, yeah, I'm here. I'm talking to you guys. 
Um, will Magnasty and Lopez fight in this event? No, they're not on this card. I don't even know who Magnasty is. Yeah, I don't know which Lopez you're referring to, but um, there's no Magnasty or Lopez on this card. But on this card, I'll, I'll tell you who's notable fighters on this card. You have Otha Jones the third. You have Otha Jones the third. You have uh, Connor Ben. You have Craig Richards and Andre Sterling. Right now, as we're talking, uh, Shannon Courtney just made it her way to the ring. And that's what it is. Oh, Scream Bomb Squad. You know, I, yeah, I won't do that again. I, 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 I won't do that for quite some time. But, you know, I don't care, man. I don't care. Me, me Scream Bomb Squad isn't going to make him beat Anthony Joshua or Tyson Fury or Dillian White. So, so right now, as... um. Right now, the second fight on this card is about to take place. We have women's boxing. So for those of you who don't who, who don't like women's boxing, um, you might want to just ask me start, start asking me questions about start asking me questions about um other things in boxing because Shannon Courtney's fighting right now. Now I'm not gonna lie to you guys. A lot of people say Shannon Courtney is an attractive woman. I'm not really attracted to Shannon Courtney. Nothing that she's not attracted to me. Like I, I think she's very overrated. She's bang average, as the Brits would say. She's average as hell. She's a seven. She's a seven at best. I'm from South Florida. She's like a three in South Florida, you know, out of ten. Um, I don't like her attitude. I saw. I, I didn't watch the interview, but I saw. I saw an interview on IFL TV where she was talking about all these weird weirdos who DM her and stuff like that. And I can just tell she has a fat head. So I'm not really a fan of her, but she's fighting right now. The only women's fighters I like, I'll be honest with you, the only women's fighters I like are women's fighters who can actually fight and who are feminine. If you are a women's fighter who can fight but is also feminine, then I like you. So, you know, women who, women who act like women outside the ring but they can fight inside the ring, those are the women's fighters I like. So, Sinicia Estrada, I like her. Alicia Bumgarner, I like her. Um, and they're both attractive too and they can fight. And they're actually feminine women outside the ring. So... I don't like women who, who try to come into boxing and try to make it a men versus women's thing. No, you're a woman. You're not going to beat up a man. Okay, I, I don't give a fuck. You're not beating up a man. Shannon Courtney is not going to go out and beat up um, Javante Davis or whoever's at a weight class in, 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 the men's, in the men's boxing, you know? She's not. So I don't like when I hear Clutcher Shield try to say she, she could beat up... Um, when, when Clutcher Shield says she can beat up Triple G, like, that's ridiculous. Do you have a crush on Sinicia Estrada? Yes, I do. A very big crush. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not afraid to, uh, to say that out loud. I love Sinicia Estrada. I love me Sinicia Estrada. Shannon Courtney's beating the shit out of this girl, though. I'll, I'll give her that. She's, she's, killing, she's killing this girl. Left hands and rights and left hands and rights. And other girls just kind of there and getting touched up. My opinion since I practice sport is that women shouldn't fight. Yeah, it's an opinion that many people share. Um, oh, there's a knockdown. Shannon Courtney scores a knockdown here in the first round. There you go. Shannon Courtney got a knockdown. Let's go, champ. For me, like... I'll give, you, I'll give you guys my take on women's boxing. So my take on women's boxing has changed over the years. When I first started covering boxing here on YouTube, I felt like women should be included. And, you know, you, you, Brandon, you got to cover women's boxing and all this stuff. So I tried to cover women's boxing, but then, like, there's not that many great fights to be made in women's boxing. And it's just, like, for the most part, outside of a couple, a handful of fighters, women's boxing is, is boring to me. It's boring because there's not a lot of compelling fights. And that's just what it is. And a lot of, a lot of the women's fighters are not very likable. In my in my humble opinion, um, I don't hate women's boxing and I don't slag it off because believe it or not, when I the first boxing gym I ever trained at, when I would when I picked up the boxing gloves when I, when I picked up boxing gloves about five years ago, was um, at Canino's boxing gym here in Dania and the and the lady who ran the gym was Bonnie Canino and she was a former women's world champion and Bonnie was is a very good boxer she's taught me a lot about boxing so because of Bonnie. I have respect for the women's fight game, but it's not my cup of tea, and a lot of the women's fighters are not very um, likable as fighters. That is my humble opinion. Um, good left hook though by Shannon Courtney. That was a very, very good skills from Shannon Courtney. Is the most attractive pro female boxer ever Mia St. John? No, absolutely not. 
The most attractive woman's female boxer of all time is either Sinicia Estrada or uh, Alicia Bumgarner for me. Those, those are my two favorite women's fighters, Alicia Bumgarner and Sinicia Estrada. The two baddest women's fighters out there. And they can actually fight. And they can actually fight. All right, so round two of Shannon Courtney's showcase fight. As she looks to uh, get her first pro stoppage. She got a first. She got a knockdown in the first round. So let's see if she can get the girl out of here. This is actually a six rounder. The other girl she's fighting. She keeps she keeps dropping her hand. She'll throw a punch and then it comes back down here and then she's throwing a punch. So she, she's throwing a punch like this. And Shannon Courtney is just staying tight, composed, bang, 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 and it's easy for her, you know. Most of these fights, like this card is not gonna really heat up until we. This card isn't gonna really heat up until we get to the t t into the into the Ted Cheeseman fight or the Arthur Jones the third fight. Those are the fights that are gonna be like the bangers on this card. So I'm waiting for that. But until then, y'all can ask me whatever the hell you want about boxing or whatever. I don't even care. But to answer your question, Michael Kenneth. Again, I'll answer it again, just so you know. Yes, I have a massive crush on Sinisa Estrada. I would love to, uh... I don't want to say I'd love to take her out because my, my philosophy on women has changed. Like, I don't I don't believe in approaching approaching women, so I'm not going to approach her. I'm not going to try to ask her out. Oh, my God, big right hand from Shannon Courtney. You know, that's a waste of time because women, women will waste your time. And I'm not going to give any woman, no matter how much I like them or how attractive I think they are, I'm not giving any woman the, uh, the, uh the power of getting my validation. They gotta, they gotta earn my validation, straight up. Straight up and down. There you go. Shannon Courtney with a second round stoppage over her opponent. So that's the first professional stoppage of her career. So big shout out to Shannon Courtney. Um, I can't say I'm gonna make any videos about her aside from when she's live on the Zone undercards, but hey, she got a win, she's 3-0. Got, got, got her first knockout. And that's just what it is. Does Machado get his revenge tonight? I, I hope so, man. Like, I, I thought Machado overlooked Cancio because if you look at the, the build-up, he was talking about fighting Tank Davis. Uh, he had lost focus on the on the plot. So I'm hoping Machado can get it done. Um, but Cancio's not going to be any side. So, but I, I want to go with Machado winning the fight, man. I, I'm going to go for the Machado for him getting revenge. Uh, I think he's a better fighter than Cancio. I think he took his eye off the prize and he ran into a guy who was very hungry, very dangerous, and had a lot to fight for on the night, you know? So give me, give me Machado via uh, decision. She has a great smile on the reels. She does. I I, I met Sneeze a couple of times. She's actually like like normally when I talk, well, I'm not very tall myself, so she's actually shorter than me. So that, you know, I, I like that. I like girls who are shorter than me. Not too, not too many of those out there. So, but I'm not gonna approach her. Like I I, I might say, if I see her and you know I, I feel there's something there, I might try. I, I I and she's giving me choosing signals. Then maybe I might do something one day. But um, you know, I'm just gonna focus on this boxing thing. Get get my, get my paper up. And if it happens, it happens, champ. Shannon Courtney was one. Uh, just, just so you guys know, I'm gonna give for those of you who, who don't know much about Shannon Courtney. Shannon Courtney, she just had a third professional fight. Eddie Hearn signed her recently. Um, she was one of those girls like 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 five or six years ago. She st she suffered from being she was a she was a fat girl. She was like 70, 80 pounds overweight. And she lost like 70 or 80 pounds, got real skinny. She was one of those ugly fat girls. Now she's kind of decent, I guess, depending on if you, if you like the Shannon Courtney type. Um, you know, a lot of guys find her attractive now. So now she's more marketable. And Eddie Hearn is trying to push her as the next big thing in women's boxing. I don't see it. I'll be honest with you. I don't see it. I think she's a, a solid fighter. I think she could fight. But I don't think she has the personality or the looks to be a, a top women's fighter. Straight up. Straight up, I'll be honest with you. Uh, and, and I'm talking about, and when I say top women's fighter, I don't mean in terms of accomplishments. I mean in terms of being a, 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 a box office attraction. But hey, I'm just one man. My perception, in my opinion, might be different. You know, Eddie, Eddie Hearn's a promoter, so he's going to promote who he thinks he can make him money. He thinks she can make him money, so fair play to him.
Machado is plus 150. I jumped all, in all on that. Yeah, that, that, that's th those are good odds. Those are good odds, man. I would love to. Um, I would love to see Machado get, get the job done. You know, he's Puerto Rican, so you know, um, I want to see some Puerto Rican fighters get some Ws because Puerto Rican fighters have been taking L's left, right, and center. You know, Manuel Ruiz got iced by Inoue. As a, as a Puerto Rican myself, I want to see Machado get it done. Let's go, champ LMFAO. Briggs still looking for a shot. He's gonna be waiting till the day he dies. We all we all have dreams. Listen. When it comes to Shannon Briggs, I want you guys to listen up, listen up real good, because I know how Shannon moves. I know how he really is. Shannon Briggs is not serious about boxing. He's never been serious about boxing. He comes to the gym. He trains once or twice a week. And then you don't see him for like weeks on end. You know, he ain't really, he ain't, he ain't really training, you know. He went to the UK. He ate fish and chips like crazy. And, you know, he ballooned up to 280 pounds. Straight up. And so now he's going to take it off. And now he's saying he wants a shot. Well, no. He had his time. He didn't maximize it. He didn't fight out to his potential. You, you you get left in the dust, straight up. I love Shannon. I think he'd be a great trainer. I think he'd be a great promoter. I think there's still other ways he could leave his dent in the boxing world other than boxing itself, you know? So, I wish Shannon the best, but I really think he should stop fighting. BT, pride comes before the fall. I remember Ronda Rousey saying she could beat up Floyd, then she lost. Yeah, man. Uh, Ronda Rousey... And you know, it's funny, men, the idiots, men who don't know shit about fighting, were buying into Ronda Rousey saying that. They were saying, oh yeah, Ronda Rousey, she, she could beat Floyd's ass. I'm like, bro, Floyd will murder that chick in, 20, in five seconds. Maybe the same thing will happen to Cluster Shields, yeah. I, I think so, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't really see anybody beating her though, because it's like, she's already beating everybody at her weight. So I don't really see how she's gonna lose, you know? Everyone around the way, with, with the exception of Cecilia Brickus, who's old, is weak. Straight up, weak ass weight class. The only girl who I think had a chance to beat her was Hannah Gabriels, but she, she beat her already. Experience and just learning, and sometimes in women's boxing, the opponents coming through a thin to the ground in terms of the quality that's out there. So you do have to move a little bit quicker than most. So it's time for that step up now. She had three fights very quickly. She's looking good. She's a right hand pull. Ron, I was, yo, I remember I was so happy when Ronda Rousey got destroyed by Holly Holm. I was so happy. When Holly Holm destroyed Ronda Rousey, I was so happy. I was so sick of the Ronda Rousey hype train. And do you guys remember when Ring? Do you guys remember when when Ring Magazine put Ronda Rousey on the cover? Disgraceful, absolutely disgraceful stuff. Who's your favorite boxer of all time, bro? Okay, well I I I'll give you my I'll give you my listing in in chronological order. Uh, number one. Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. That, that's my favorite boxer of all time. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's number one. Number two, Riddick Big Daddy Bo. He's number two. Number three, Michael Nunn. Number four, Evander Holyfield. Number five, um, Larry Holmes. Connor was saying he could beat... Jesus before the Floyd fight. Jesus. Not Jesus. <laughs> I said Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. And that's why you start you start speaking you start chatting shit about the Lord and you get high you, you, you get humbled, you know? The Bible says he who humbles himself will be exalted. Alright? The Bible says freaking it says it says pride comes before the fall. Pride comes before the fall and and Connor had it on the hard way. He had it on the hard way. Yeah, Ronda, 
Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey is is what happens when you, Ronda Rousey is what happens when you allow feminism to rule over a country. A woman who thinks she's a man, but then wants to still be a woman at times. You know, I don't know. Like Ronda Rousey is one of those women where you know I'm not gonna lie. I think Ronda Rousey is actually attractive, but then you, you, she starts talking and she's not attractive anymore. That's in my opinion. All right, I finally finished my energy bar, so I'm good. Let's go, champ. Bellator MMA. They got the, they got an ad for Bellator MMA on right now. Yo, I'm sorry. I don't know how anybody can watch MMA. I'm no, no no disrespect to MMA, but I, I I just can't get down with it, man. I can't get down with it. Nice list, man. Yeah, those my those are my favorite fighters. I love those guys: Roman, Michael Nunn, Bo, Holyfield, Larry Holmes. I love all of them. As you can see, that list has mostly heavyweights. So I, I I love the heavyweight. Yes, yo, for those of you guys who 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 can find a stream or have the zone. And I just following on my commentary. You're gonna want to tune in right now because the fight of the, the, the most exciting fight on the whole card is about to happen. Uh, British domestic light heavyweight fight between uh, Craig Richards and Andre Sterling. Craig Richards has absolutely f amazingly fast hands. Good fighter. Andre Sterling, uh, good fighter as well. These two have been talking a lot of trash in the build up to this fight. This is this is the fight you want. Like if there was a fight on this card, if you said BT, what's the fight? What's the fight that actually you're looking for on this card? I would say this fight right here between Craig Richards and uh, Andre Sterling. These two guys right here are are, are are solid British level fighters, both trying to push their way up to world level. Um, right now, I'd probably favor Craig Richards. Um, I think he's got a better chance of becoming a better fighter at world level. But Andre Sterling's no slouch either. So we'll we'll see what happens, man. I'm looking forward to this fight. Um, Andre Sterling is 10 and 0. Uh, Craig Richards is 14 and 1. I can't remember who he lost to right now, but um, I saw Craig Richards fight on the undercard of some undercard earlier this year, and he looked really good. Yeah, man, Ronda Rousey, I mean, like, I, I don't know, ever since, the last couple months, I've been going through this kind of like awakening in my life in regards to women and how they operate and how the world views them and how they really are and I don't know man, like Ronda, Ronda Rousey, I mean, again, I, I agree with Sheehy, I thought, or uh, Fur Loves Gia Mendes, I thought she was a tr attractive at one point too, but she hasn't been attracted to me in like two or three years because of when she talks and how she conducts herself, you know? When I when I look at a woman, I don't I don't just look at their looks. I look at how they conduct themselves. You know, how they conduct themselves. If they look decent and they conduct themselves nicely, then okay, I'll probably be more attracted to them. But if they don't, if they don't conduct themselves in a decent manner, I'm not gonna be attracted to them. I like Sinisa Estrada because she conducts herself in a nice manner. You know, I like Alicia Bumgarner because for the most part she conducts herself in a nice manner. Ronda Rousey is attractive, but I'm not attracted to her because she just doesn't conduct, she conducts herself like a man. She's not a man. She doesn't have a dick. Straight up, she doesn't have testosterone. Unless she's injecting it into herself. So. Both these guys are uh, Andre Sterling and Craig Richards. Both of them about 28, 29. They're both from South London, so this is a, this is actually a a big rivalry for the South London boxing community. There was a there was a gym. There was a video that went kind of viral um in, in uh on Instagram on IFL TV 
uh, of these two guys shouting at each other outside the Peacock Gym in London. So uh, they don't like each other. They they they, uh, they really want to prove a point, and it should be an interesting fight. This is the one fight that. I got really interested in watching when I saw the card and when I saw the build up, you know. So we'll see. Hope, hopefully, it's not a letdown. Hopefully, it's not like one of those uh, Lawrence Coley, Isaac Chamberlain type fights. Oh shit! You're right, Johnny. My bad, Johnny. I gotta, I gotta take uh, Larry Holmes. I gotta take Larry Holmes out of there. Manny Pacquiao is my top one, of my top five too. I can't, believe, I can't believe I forgot about Pacquiao. Pacquiao is one of my favorite fighters ever. Yeah, Pacquiao. Pacquiao's probably right up there for me with um Pacquiao's probably my third favorite fighter of all time. Um Pacquiao so Roman Roman Bo Pacquiao Michael Nunn Evander Holyfield. That's my that's my list. Top five. Are you gonna be live for Cancia versus Machado? Yes, I will be live for Cancia versus Machado LA twelve. Hope to see you there. Hopefully uh we get a decent turn off of that. I'm not expecting big numbers for this for this uh live fight reaction because it's 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 just domestic British fighters. Hey, true. I'm I'm back, bro. This on the zone, and congrats on 20k, brother. Allah, Allah Madulia. Sorry if I butchered that. I'm not I'm not Muslim, so I don't know how to pronounce that. But Allah, I don't know how to sound that out. But I appreciate that, my Muslim brother. Um, yeah, this fight is on the zone. This um. This fight is on the zone. Um, you have it. It's, it's a UK card, so it's it's an Eddie Hearn show, one of those next gen shows. I'm not sure if you're familiar with those, but those next the, the, the next generation series he does, where they normally have fights at York Hall, where they showcase the upcoming talents in British boxing. Uh, so far, there's only been two fights. You had uh, Charles Frankham, a one and zero prospect. He's uh, he he won via first round stoppage, and then you had Shannon Courtney. She won via uh, second round stoppage. So not competitive fights, but this fight coming up right here. I'm telling you right now, this fight coming up right here. You're gonna this one. Um, Craig Richards, Andre Sterling, two solid British level light heavyweights. Uh, been a lot of trash talking in the build up this week. I think this is the best fight on the card. Straight up, best fight on the card is gonna be this one right here. So if you got the zone, tune in right now. And I appreciate, I appreciate, uh, you know, you, you congratulating me for uh, the 20K. I'm uh, very happy about that. You know, it's been a long time coming. It's been a long, hard road. As many of you know, I, I've, I've dealt with a lot of things. Uh, I've quit. A, I've quit a couple times. I've came back. I've had hiatuses. You know, I've gone through a lot here in front of this camera here on True School Sports, and I'm, I'm just glad that you guys still tune in, that you still watch, that you still tune, uh, that, that, you, that you like, what, like what I'm doing, and I appreciate being appreciated. So long may it continue. Are you gonna stream Paul Lee versus Artem? I might. Um, I just got paid, so I might. Um. I might do that, and I might um, buy. The, I might buy the pay per view and watch the Paul Malnagi versus Artem Lobov bare knuckle fight. That's that's tomorrow, I think, right? That's tomorrow. So uh, I might do that and, and, and see what that, see what that's all about. Let you know. I'll take some surveys tonight. I'll take some surveys tonight and see what you guys think. How many of the six or seven of you, or however many of you that are watching right now? How many of you guys want to see me go live for the Paul Malnagi Artem Lobov bare knuckle fight? How many of you would like to see that? I might go live for it tomorrow. If you want, if you want to see me go live for it, let me know in the comments. BT is Frank Bruno training Daniel Dubois for the Nathan Gomer fight, and what do you make of it? Yeah, I had a chance to actually watch that video with uh, Nathan Gorman versus um, I mean, I'm Daniel Dubois talking with Frank Bruno. I don't think he's training him, but I think he's kind of just advising him, showing some tips. Um, kind of taking him on as a mentor, but I don't think he's a, his official trainer. Um, but I think it's good for Daniel Dubois. You know, Frank Bruno is a guy that fought in the Golden Age of heavyweights. You know, he he's been in there with Mike Tyson. He's been in there with Lennox Lewis. He's been world champion. He's been a guy that many people would say overachieved in his career. So I think it's a good a good guy to learn from. I think it's a good guy to learn from. From and he you can't go wrong learning from a guy like Frank Bruno. You know. It would be big, man. Do it. Stream it. Badass. Okay. All right. So so far, two of you said uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stream that I should stream the Ben Uncle fight tomorrow. So we'll see. We'll see. Well, I didn't get paid yet. I'm I'm still waiting for my YouTube money to to, to I'm, I'm waiting for that YouTube direct deposit to hit tomorrow. So if it, if it hits tomorrow, I'll go ahead and buy that pay per view. Cause I think it's like 15 bucks. So 
I should have enough for it. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely have enough for it if I get my money tomorrow, so. So yes, yeah, patiently waiting for the uh, Craig Richards versus Andre Sterling domestic fight. Um, then you got uh, Arthur Jones the third making his UK debut. You got Ted Cheeseman looking to rebound um, from the Sergio Garcia fight, and then you have the main event for Conor Ben. My man Ali three one three. He says, "Are you happy with Charlotte's draft moves?" Absolutely not. I'm I'm actually angry with our, our draft. I think we've had a lot of horrible drafts in the past, but I would go as far as to say that last night the Charlotte Hornets draft was one of the worst, maybe even the worst draft we've ever had. Um, I think they took the safe pick with P.J. Washington, which I think is horrible. They drafted P.J. Washington to be a stretch four for Marvin Williams because Marvin's not going to be a Hornet for too much longer. So they, they drafted a Marvin Williams replacement. I don't think he's going to be a, a, a great you know, player. I think he'll be a solid player, but not a great player. I think... Um, I would have taken the gamble on Nazir Little, who I think had a bit more upside, and he was there at at at, at um at 12. Um, and then the pick that really pissed me off was 36. They drafted Cody Martin, who was a bum in uh in the ACC playing for NC State, and then he went to he transferred to the Mountain West and had two solid years at uh, Nevada, I think it was, or wherever he went to school. And he you know he never shot higher than 33% from the three point line, so that pick to me was. Horrible, absolutely horrible. So I'm not really a big fan of the Hornets draft moves, and I think Kemba should leave and do his best for his career. But right now, uh, getting back to boxing, uh, you got Andre Sterling making his way to the ring, making looking to make an impression and to stay unbeaten in this big domestic dust up. You know, so looking forward to this fight. I think this will be the fight of the card. Y'all gonna be back to compete for the 8th seed with us next year. Pistons for, for versus Hornets for the 8th again. Our draft wasn't so good either. Yeah, man. Honestly, truth be told, I don't even think we're gonna be competing for the 9th seed if we keep this up. Straight up. I think we'll be, be finishing 10th, 11th next year. But I'm gonna wait to see what we do the rest of the offseason. Hopefully, we can be signed Kemba. That's first and foremost. After that... Uh, hopefully we can get him some help because the man needs some help straight up All right, so Craig Richards South London's very own Crystal Palace's very own Craig Richards making his way to the ring looking to make a massive impression in this fight, you know, it, it's one of the uh, you know, it's a fight he really needs to win because right now, when you look at the landscape of, of British light, uh, light heavyweights, it, it's very loaded right now. Uh, you have Joshua Bawatsi who's leading the pack. You got Anthony Yard, who's not too far behind him. You got um, Josea Burton. You got um, you got guys like him. You know, who are kind of on that. You know, they're on the outside of that top four, top five of the British light heavyweight ranking. So he needs to really win this. Because he 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 needs that to make that statement and a, and a guy like Andre Sterling, a guy who's been ten and zero at that same level as you, you know, these are the kind of fights you need to win if you want to push onwards and upwards towards that world level, towards that you know being a contender. So the winner of the, the winner of this fight, if they win in impressive fashion, they're gonna be in a very good position moving forward. Kemba, Kemba said he's taking less to sign less to sign more talent. And how could you not love that guy? How could you not love Kemba Walker? You know, the guy could be greedy and say, I want my $44 million a season. Get, give me the Supermax. But no, he, he's going to take a $41 million pay cut um, to try to make his situation better. So, personally, I think he should leave because the Hornets front office is, is extremely incompetent and can't do anything right. Yard will lose to Oldalev. I think so. I think he's in over his head. I think he's way in over his head in the Kobe left fight. Turn the volume up a little bit for this one. Thank you. 
Yeah, Kovalev versus Jared would be an absolutely great fight. Hopefully it happens, man. Hopefully it can happen. I really wanted to see it. I think Kovalev would outbox him and probably knock Yard down in the first five rounds. I don't, I don't think Yard would be able to handle Kovalev's power. Because he's got fight-changing power. Very heavy hands. Andre Sterling, 10-0 10 with 4 KOs. I mean, I think from a business standpoint, it makes sense because Miller's a New Yorker and stuff like that. But personally, I don't think Miller should be getting any opportunities in fights of that magnitude for well over a year and a half. Um, the guy did horrible as far as the amount of drug tests he failed. I mean, the guy felt had EPO, HGH, and GW1516 in his system. It was it was crazy. It was crazy cheating even by boxing standards. So he needs to work his way back up. He needs to win four or five big fights before you consider him for a fight against Fury. But I expect that it will happen, and I expect that Fury will look sensational when he fights him because stylistically Miller is a is, is a cakewalk for Fury. Craig Richards, let's go champ. I like Craig Richards. Good, good solid fighter. So, should be a good fight. I'm gonna commentate it, so if you guys, uh, you guys keep driving your questions down, you subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, make sure you hit that uh, like button, so you let YouTube know that you're rocking with your boy, True School. And yeah, uh, I'm gonna commentate this fight. Should be a good one. I know you guys, a lot of you watching this right now probably aren't that familiar with Craig Richards and Andre Sterling. Truthfully, I'm not too familiar with Andre Sterling myself. I just know he's 10 with four knockouts, and he's, a, he's relatively at uh, Craig's level. But here we go. Craig Richards in the white trunks with the gold trim. Uh, or no, Andre Sterling in the white trunks with the gold trim. Craig Richards in the black trunks with the red trim. Uh, as you can see already, um, Craig Richards is a... Uh, Longer range of your fighter, so I think the jab will be very important for him in this fight to establish that early to set up the right hand to set up the hooks. You know, he's got he's a well schooled boxer, his punches come from a very good place. This is a this is a 12 rounder from the famed Your Call in London, so it should be a good fight, you know. Craig Richards fainting trying to break the rhythm of uh, Andre Sterling. Sterling, if, if you watch Andre Sterling, his eyes are wide open like this. They're, they're like wide open. They're wide open. That boy is focused right now. He has not blinked and he doesn't look like he's going to blink anytime soon. Good job there from Craig Richards. So right now, one thing that Craig Richards is doing really good is, is he, hasn't, he hasn't landed or overcommitted to too many shots, but if you watch him right now, he's touching Andre Sterling up top, down low, down low, up top, up top, down low, and it's dropping the eyes and bringing the eyes up and down of, of uh, Andre Sterling, and it's setting up, it, it's going to set up that right hand, as long, so as long as he keeps doing that, I think it'll work well for him because I, I haven't seen much of Andre Sterling fight, but when you if, if you look at Andre Sterling right now, you can tell he's very nervous. Very nervous. You can see he's he's clenching his gloves like this, you know. Another good jab there from uh, Craig Richards. Andre Sterling double jabs, but nothing doing there. Good right hand of the body there from Andre Sterling. There you go. 
Richards is doing a nice job of blocking everything off. And uh, Sterling getting picked off with a little yeah. jab there. Yeah, good jab there from Craig Richards again. Interesting that all the work is coming from Sterling here in this first round. But he's not much there you go, a good up jab there from Arne Sterling. Arne Sterling just bang, up jab. Dang. There you go. Up jab again. Use it up jab again. There you go. So far, the only punch I've seen to work for uh, for Andre Stone so far has been that up jab. You, know, you up jab, and then you can come with the right. There you go. Another up jab there from Andre Stone. Uh, Andre Sterling tying Sterling up Craig Sterling Richards, trying to up that's been, uh, going on. lean on him a little bit, being a stockier guy. It's a 12 round fight too, so I wouldn't expect the first couple rounds to be feel out rounds, but so far it's been good sustained action from both fighters. Good right hand to the body there from Andre Sterling on Craig Richards. Good first round. I think I thought both fighters did good work in spots, um, but the fighter who did the more consistent work throughout the round was Craig Richards. He was picking off Andre Sterling with his jab, using his reach. Uh, didn't really mix in the right hand too much, but Andre Sterling, as the round went on, he seemed to you know he seemed to find find a good a good um a, a good rhythm with the up jab. He's using the up jab because you know Craig Richards is a tall fighter, so he's using the up jab, stepping out the right, landing it occasionally. Um, I think he, you could have given him that round, but uh, I give it to Craig Richards just because he was the more consistent throughout the round, you know. HG13 Johnny says uh, Wilder versus Ortiz too. My take on that fight, if that's what you're asking me. Um, I think Deontay Wilder is going to iron out Luis Ortiz in less than four rounds. Luis Ortiz is a fighter who I think you know his stamina has declined. Um, his power is declining. They say the last thing to, to go for you as a fighter is your power. Um, he, 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 didn't, he, he wasn't able to stop Christian Hammer his last fight. The fight before that, it took him 9 to 10. I think it took him about 12 rounds to get Travis Kaufman out of there. So uh, his power is not there anymore. Uh, his stamina has been gone. And Wilder mentally has been improving as a fighter with each knockout he's been getting. He's been beginning to believe in himself more and more. So I got, I got uh, Deontay Wilder beating... Uh, Luis Ortiz in devastating fashion. I'm talking viral, viral knockout, proper knockout, like just dest destructive knockout. All right, so round two, Craig Richard versus Andre Sterling at the famed your call. Uh, right now, uh, Andre Sterling is trying to work his way in. There you go, good right hand there from... Uh, Andre Sterling. He's beginning to graze Richards more and more with these jabs. You know, Richards has the better jab, but Sterling, being the shorter fighter, is using his jab. He's he's making sure that when when Richards jabs, he jabs with him and gives us something to think about. And I, I think so far, tactically, he's fighting a, a decent fight so far. My question with Sterling is, can he can he get Craig Richards' attention with with, power, with with a good flush power shot? You know, because he's landing these grazing jabs, but when he goes to throw the right. Uh, uh, Craig Richards is doing a good job of smothering him or rolling the shots, and he hasn't been able to really hurt him with anything. Good jab there from Andre Sterling, and body shots from Andre Sterling. Here comes Andre Sterling. Good defense from Andre Sterling. Oh, good body shot from Andre Sterling. Okay, Andre Sterling's getting he's working, his way, he's working his way into the fight. Craig Richards needs to show more than just a jab. Because right now, Andre Sterling's showing me more. Even though I thought Craig Richards won the first round because he had the more consistent work, Andre Sterling is showing me the more complete work. If you're a tourist coming to this city, give Crystal Palace a miss. Another look to see. And Palace burned down decades ago. Crystal Palace is still going strong. Crystal Palace yeah you can't compare you can't compare Deontay Wilder to Mike Tyson Mike Tyson fought uh, decent opposition you know at least he fought like the Razor Ruddocks of the world and he fought um, Frank Bruno and, and he fought good fighters you know and he was the un he, he was the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world at like 20 years old he did unprecedented shit in boxing no comparison no comparison between the two
But yeah, we're here in the, in the last 30 seconds of Andre Sterling versus Craig Richards. This is a much better round from Andre Sterling. He's been able to land his jab. He's been able to land some body shots, back Craig Richards up in spots. Um, to me, so far, as long as he don't get knocked down in the next 13 seconds, this is, this is a clear Andre Sterling round. Clear Andre Sterling round. So, so far, I think it's been a good fight. It's been good sustained action throughout the first two rounds. I, I, I would hope that things pick up. What channel are you watching the fights? I'm watching them on the zone. So if you don't if you don't have the zone, you'll probably have to go try to find a stream. You might want to try you go into a site like Vipbox or Vip League or Sport Lemon or Crick Free. One of them websites. You, you might be able to find a the zone stream. And it might even be better than my you know what? I'm gonna go on that website. It might even be better than my stream. Let's see. Probably if Stella landed a little bit of a cleaner shot. Yes, yeah, so I gave Andre Stone that round. I got a 1-1 piece. Cleaner shots landed are probably... Stella and Adam. Richards had some early success in that round with the jab, but went away from it again very, very quickly. Yeah, no question that Stone was looking to target the body, but he's struggling to land clean. Moment. These two are doing a pretty good job of cancelling each other out. There we are, range issues. That body shot did, did a rip through there, but uh, Richards is doing a pretty good job with those elbows tucked in. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, I, 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 I was getting a bit frustrated with, with the lagging on the zone, so I just, I just went to VipBox and put it on there. You know, so I'm on VipBox now. For those of you who want to find a stream to the Andre Sterling um, Craig Richards fight, just go to VipBox, click through the ads, and you'll be able to watch it. I'm watching it right now on VipBox. Be careful to the VipBox. Oh. Good jab there from Andre Sterling. Ooh, good body shot there on the inside by Craig Richards. Okay, Craig. Bend the knees. Bend the knees and go to the body. It's very, very awkward. This isn't going to be pretty. If you're going to beat Andre Sterling, you're going to have to fight down and do it the hard way. Because yeah, Andre Sterling is making this very hard with Craig. Craig Richards was a favorite because he, he was looking to be the more skilled fighter going into this fight, but Andre Sterling, man, I'm not going to lie to you. I've never seen Andre Sterling fight. I just heard him talk during the week and I've seen his record. I like Andre Sterling. You know, he goes with jabs. He comes in hard. He steps in hard with the right hand. I like Andre Sterling. I, I kind of want Andre Sterling to win this fight. Oh, man. Good jab there from Andre Sterling, but then it's countered by a jab by Craig Richards. Richards began to loosen up the, the body a bit more. Big right hand there from Craig Richards. Andre Sterling got touched. Jab to the stomach there by Craig Richards. Okay. Let's go, champ. I can't find it. I'm watching another fight instead. What, what, what fight are you watching? I'm, I'm watching Andre Sterling versus Craig Richards at your call. I'll, you know what? I'll do. I'll do you guys a solid one. I'll drop you the link right now. Hold on. Give me, give me one second. I'm, I'm gonna drop you guys the link. Sterling, I know you went with Craig Richards, Matt, there wasn't a lot in it, Sterling, I thought, 
lifted it up in the first 90 seconds, two minutes, but the week is there, guys. I did that week for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're in round four of Andre Sterling versus Craig Richards. We're in the fourth round of Andre Sterling versus Craig Richards. It's been a good fight. I got uh, I got Craig Richards up two rounds to one. I thought he won that last one. I think I think he's beginning to settle in a bit. But Andre is still, like, he's still making it really hard for Craig. You know, he's he's coming in, he's using his hook, he's using his jab. Even being the shorter man, he's he's he's, he's maintained an active jab for this fight. So I could easily see a scorecard where you have Andre showing up two to one. You know, it's been a competitive fight. That first fight, that that first round was a swing round that I gave to Craig because he was the more consistent of the two. They will know one of these two. They might know both of them. They've been split loyalties, divided loyalties. That's certainly true. Mm. Look at the right hand over the top there, Sterling. There's a good chance to body from Richards just before that. Andre Sterling. He gets hit Craig with a feint. Craig walked right into a jab, and then he came up with the right. And then another jab by Andre Sterling. Okay. Andre Sterling says two of Craig's three punches there. And then one thing Andre, I think, is doing a good job of. He's a stockier, bigger man. He's getting into Andre and trying to, like, walk him back and lean on him a little bit, being the, uh, as far as having the wider frame. Ooh. Overhand right from Andre Sterling. Land right, right on the, right on the, uh, the cheekbone of uh, Craig Richards. Ooh, short right hand right there by Andre Sterling. Okay. You're welcome, Sheehy. That was for you. That, that was for you, champ. I, I like you, so that was for you. Normally, I wouldn't care about people. Man, big right hand there from Andre Sterling. He's slipping punches and he's showing good defense and he's blocking. And if you if, if you're watching the fight right now, he's got these wide eyes, like he's always focused. I think I think Craig Richards, when you watch him, he's suffering from Anthony Joshua syndrome, where he's a longer fighter, he's a bigger fighter, but he's having a hard time with a smaller fighter in, in Andre Sterling. And Andre Sterling, his work rate, his consistency, his ability to maintain. Keeping that jab in his face, you know he's showing good defense spots, slipping and moving. He's showing a good overhand right at times. So I'm really, I'm really happy with what I'm seeing from Andre Sterling. Uh, I, I got this fight. Uh, I was just getting to that box. I got, I got it two rounds apiece. For I, I got it two rounds apiece, but I could see a scorecard where you have Andre Sterling up three one. I think really he could have won that last, the first round, which I had a swing I gave it to Craig. But what do you have it? What do you have it? A uh, box? What do you have it? George Groves in attendance, sitting there ringside at your call. He said he wants Richards to win. But who do you have, who do you have winning though, Box? Who do you have? Anthony Yard and Tunde Ajay also ringside at the fights. I got a two rounds apiece. Well, here in round five, very, very crucial point in the fight. Um, I think Andre Sterling came into this fight thinking he could win, but now I think he comes in knowing he can win. Um, being able to uh, jab pretty good with uh, um, Craig Richards. And one thing, I, one thing I know about Craig is Craig is, he suffers from the same problem a lot of fighters have. He can't fight going backwards. And when Andre puts pressure on him, he squares up and stands straight up. So Andre needs to keep putting the pressure on him. He, 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 could, he could get him out of there if he lands the right shot. Craig, Craig Richards suffers from the Anthony Joshua syndrome. He, he struggles with smaller fighters, I can tell. Good defense there by Andre Sterling. And, and Craig, I can tell Craig, Craig is doing what he can on the inside, but he, he doesn't really feel that comfortable on the inside. He's not comfortable digging to that body. Good defense there from Andre Sterling. 
Has Cheeseman fought yet? No. Cheeseman hasn't fought yet. Um, I think he's a fight after this. I think he's, he'll be either the fight or after this or the fight after the next one. But yeah, uh, Craig Richards, like he's missing with a lot of his jabs. Um, he hasn't been able to really find the right hand. Andre Sterling is kind of smothering him and tying him up and walking him back, being a stockier guy. Um, a couple of times he's been countered with, with, with overhand rights. The only reason I think he's won two rounds is just because in many cases of, this, of, of, of a couple rounds of this fight, he's been able to land a jab with consistency. Good defense by Andre Sterling. See, th 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 this is a good example. A lot of people say, oh, well, this guy's a taller guy. He's going to out-jab someone. This, is, this, this fight right now is a good example of a smaller fighter out-jabbing a bigger guy, controlling range on a bigger guy. Because um, Sterling is, is, is shorter than uh, Craig Richards, but he, the, the range hasn't been really an issue for him. Good right hand there from Andre Sterling. And he walks Richards back to the corner. And Richards counters with his own right hand. We've got a decent little exchange going on here. Referee has separate two. Yeah, right now, if you look at the body language of Craig Richards, you see a very frustrated man. You see a man who didn't think he'd be fighting a guy this skilled, this good. And I'll be honest with you, I never heard much about Andre Sterling, but he's, he's, he's definitely making, making a name for himself with me right now. He's putting on a good performance. I gave it around to Craig, uh, Andre Sterling. That's 3-2. It's, it's a clear round. You know, the rounds that Andre Sterling has won, he's been winning them clear. Like, I'm talking about clear rounds. Um, he's setting the pace. He's, he's, he started in the first round. Towards the latter stages of that first round, he was landing that up jab. Being a smaller man, up jab, up jab. And then... He's been setting up the up jab by then letting the overhand right, you know? So, um, being the, 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 the wider guy as far as being more stocky, he's been tying him up. He's been using that muscle, that weight to, to lie up on Richards. Richards moves back in straight lines, catches him with the right hand. Um, good stuff from Andre Sterling. I don't think it was just Joshua being bad in fight. He's done well with Taco and Povetkin. Well, Ta I mean, the, the, the Taco fight, he did okay with the Taco fight. You know, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't say he did good with Taco. He, he, did, he did what he needed to do. He did the bare minimum to beat him. Um, Povetkin, I thought he made some good adjustments and eventually got him out of there. Um, but for the most part, the guys he struggled with in his career have always been shorter fighters, Anthony Joshua. So that is what it is. But midway point of the uh, Andre Sterling versus Craig Richards fight, uh, we have Andre Sterling on my scorecard. He's up 3-2. Um, out jabbing Andre Sterling. Out muscling on, um, Craig Richards. And Craig Richards being the bigger rangier guy with, with good boxing skills and sound boxing skills, he hasn't been able to really establish his jab. And because he hasn't been able to establish his jab, you got Andre Sterling having a field day with him. Picking it up every round. Mm. Another right hand from Andre Sterling. That right hand from Andre Sterling is beginning to land at will. Almost any time he throws that overhand right, there it is again. Another right hand by Andre Sterling. Walks him back. Andre Sterling fighting a good fight, man. There you go. Again, another right hand from Andre Sterling. Another one. Craig Richards, Jesus. Protect the right hand. Shield the punches. Do something. Let me get you an American trainer. Another right hand from Andre Sterling. Here we go. Now Craig Richards tries, tries to fire back. Andre Sterling, bro. He, he getting in his ass straight up. He's all up in that ass. Good jab there from Andre Sterling. And then Craig Richards returns the right hand. And a jab from Craig Richards. Good jab there from Andre Sterling. 
Stone's going to do. He's going to shoot the jab. He's going to kick to his right. Your right hand's going to go over his shoulder. Start throwing the right hand over the top. Start throwing him underneath. Ooh, there you go. Big right hand there from Craig Richards. And that one may have hurt Andre Sterling. I think it hurt him. Here we go. The York Hall crowd comes alive as Andre Sterling is hurt. No knockdown there. I think that, that was a knockdown. No, 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 no knockdown there. Ooh, big right hand there from Craig Richards. And Andre Sterling has been knocked down here in the sixth round. That's a pivotal moment of the fight from Craig Richards on Andre Sterling. Sterling back to his feet. 30 seconds left here in the sixth round of what's becoming a very entertaining fight. Here comes Craig Richards trying to get Andre Sterling out of there. Jab from Craig Richards. 19 seconds left. Man. Craig Richards has turned this round, this whole round around. Andre Sterling trying to get out the sixth round. Oh, another big right hand there for Craig Richards. Oh my god. He's lighting him up now like a, like a, like a, like a, like a damn Christmas tree. Craig Richards is destroying Andre Sterling. He turned that round around. So, a clear round for uh, uh, Craig Richards against Andre Sterling. I got it three rounds apiece. The knockdown puts Craig Richards up by a point. Very, very good fight. And it looks like uh, Craig Richards has turned this fight on its head. And man, I was just about to say too, that was Andre Sterling's best run. I mean, he was landing right hands at will on Craig Richards. And all of a sudden, he, he didn't move his head. Craig Richards lands a straight right and, and puts him squarely on his ass. So not a good, not a good um not a good way to conclude that round for Andre Sterling. And he, and he has to make sure he can get money back in this fight. Is Sterling bleeding above his eye? Yes, he is. Richards just almost killed him in the sixth. He did. I got I got the rounds even and I got Richards up by a point. That knockdown was very big. Massive. Well, here we go in round seven. Can Craig Richards finish the job and get Andre Sterling out of there in the seventh round? Andre Sterling ties Craig Richards up. And, and, and now Richards, he's looking for that right hand. He is looking for that right hand. Oh man, Craig Richards better, better be careful. He threw this wild ass uppercut from like five feet outside. He better not do that again. Get countered like that. Good jab there from Andre Sterling. And a right from Andre Sterling. And a left foot from Andre Sterling. Okay. Decent work there from Andre Sterling. Good jab there from Craig Richards. Good feints there by Andre Sterling. Andre Sterling with two jabs that land. And a right hand from Andre Sterling. That landed flush. Good double jab there from Craig Richards, and, and now Craig Richards looks like he, he's beginning to settle into a rhythm. But he needs to have all these wild ass uppercuts. He's gonna get counted with a right doing that. He's got this whack ass uppercut he keeps throwing from way, way outside. He's gonna get hit with a right hand that way. Yeah, I'll be here for the Machado fight. My dad will be here for that too, so it should be fun. And my dad is gonna be extra hyped because my dad loves his Puerto Rican fighters, so he wants uh, Machado to get it done. This is actually, of all the fights that have been scheduled, this is one of the fights my dad has been talking about the most. So he really wants uh, Machado to get it done. They're chanting Connor, I saw that. Good body shots there from Andre Sterling. And an up jab there from Andre Sterling. So this is a better round from Andre Sterling. I think if he can avoid getting knocked down in this round, this will be a, 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 win, a, a clear win for him in this round. You know, Richard said, oh, a big right hand from Andre Sterling. Jesus. God have mercy. What a big right hand. Sterling's having a strong finish to the round here. Not 
Man, good comeback from Andre Stilling this round. Clear Andre Stilling round. So I got this fight 4-3 uh, as far as rounds go in favor of Andre Stilling. But the knockdown makes this an even fight in terms of points right now. So it's still an even fight. Andre Stilling's got a, a, a knockdown for Andre Stilling would be massive. But it is your boy BT. We're live here on True School Sports for today's uh, the zone card in the UK. You have Connor Ben. You have uh, he, he'll, he'll be main eventing. You got Ulta Jones the third. You got right now Andre Stilling versus Craig Richard in a in a, in a big domestic dust up as they would say in the UK. And um, he's doing his thing, man. He's, he's doing he's doing his damn thing, man. I, I like what I'm seeing from Andre Stilling. That over right hand, over here right has been money for him the whole fight, and he, and he needs to keep continue to land that as much as possible. Make sure y'all make sure y'all smash that like button if you haven't already. Make sure uh, oh let me know what city, what state, what continent you're watching from. I, I wanna I wanna know where you guys are from. Where you, where are you guys streaming from the, from tonight? Rep your cities down below in the comments. I'm in Hollywood, Florida, which ain't too far from the greatest city in the world. That's Daniel Beach if you don't know. But um Round eight, Andre Sterling versus Craig Richards. Been a really good fight. Been pretty much what I expected to be a really entertaining back and forth fight. Uh, Sterling really impressed me with his boxing skills. My first impression of him, being a shorter man, he been out jabbing Craig Richards. Another right handed from Andre Sterling. Used the left hook. Richards blocked it, came with the right. Bang. I think the only thing saving Craig Richards is that he's, that he's got a good chin. He showed a pretty solid chin so far. I, I gotta give Craig Richards that much. There you go. Another right hand there from Andre Sterling. Andre Sterling ties up Craig Richards at your call. Famous venue in the UK. Shout out to the Bronx. Home of my favorite basketball player ever, Kemba Walker. He said, salute to you, bro, your channel. You're doing your thing, kid. Hey, thank you. I appreciate being appreciated, champ. Woo! Andre Sterling beating his ass. Destroying him. It's a good fight. If you guys ain't watching this fight, you're missing out. Another right hand from Andre Sterling. Jesus. Another right hand from Andre Sterling. Good jab there from Craig Richards. This would be a big win for Andre Sterling if he can get it, man, because that British light heavyweight scene right now has a lot of good fighters. Buatzi, Yard, Hosea Burton, guys like that. Um, Richards is in that, in, that, in that top 10 British light heavyweights, so it would be good for him. Good defense there from Andre Sterling. Slipped a, a punch, a left hook, a big left hook from Craig Richards. Richards tying Sterling up, kind of holding, holding the head a little bit. Navajo Nation, homie, think about it. That's what I'm saying. Um, I mean, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Andre Sterling only has he only has like four knockouts in ten fights, so you can tell he doesn't have that world class power. But everything else, his footwork, his understanding of positioning, um, in fighting is solid. Man, another right hand and left hook from Andre Sterling. Jesus, punch placement is good. Good fighter, man. Very, a, a good fighter. I like Andre Sterling. My first time watching him fight. Um, don't don't have the power, but hey, he's got, he's got pretty much everything else. He's got toughness, got grit. I like him. Do you think GGG is like Costa Zoo? There's similarities. I think pound for pound, Costa Zoo is a better puncher, personally. I think GGG's power, in my opinion, was a bit overrated. I don't think he was overrated, but I think his power was. Costa Zoo, are you serious? Hell no. This turned out to be a good fight. Yeah, I was trying to tell you guys. I was telling you. Before this card even started, I said the one fight you, you, you gotta have to keep your eye out for is that Andre Sterling versus Craig Richards fight. So I called that I called that one right. I called it right. I told you guys. 
I knew it was gonna be a good fight because I had seen Craig, Craig Richards fight. I hadn't seen Andre Sterling fight, but I saw the build up. I like, saw, like, I see the way they were talking, and I just knew the fact that both these two guys were from South London. That, that, that there's a lot of pride in this fight. It's a big, it's a big fight in terms of pride and bragging rights. So when you, when you have fights like that, you know you're you're gonna get um, you're gonna get the best of fighters. You're gonna get the maximum effort. And so far, I got Andre Sterling winning five other three rounds with the knockdown. I, I have Andre Sterling up by a point going into the ninth round. Andre Sterling on his toes. Richards looks like he's try, trying to line up Sterling for a right hand, but he's not really jabbing or doing anything to set it up. He's kind of just moving, trying to get on the outside of... Oh, there he goes again. Sterling grazes him with a right hand. Again. Do you think Jorge Cota shocks Charlo on Sunday? Possibly. I mean, um, Cota's tough, man. You can't, you can't underestimate him. I think Jamel, I think Jamel Charlo is very uh, overrated. Always have, always will. Um, honestly, I haven't seen much of Jorge Cota outside the Lubin fight. I remember when he fought Eric Lubin a couple years ago and got his ass knocked out on the undercard of Danny Garcia versus uh, Clement. So, ooh. Another right hand from Andre Sterling. It's money. Right hand, the money this fight. Man, Craig Richards, I can't lie to you. If if he doesn't stop uh, Andre Sterling, th this will be a very disappointing uh, performance for him because. I saw his last fight against on the, on the, on one of the UK undercards and looked pretty good, but this one right here, um, leaving a lot, leaving a lot to be desired, champ. Leaving a lot to be desired at the moment. Not using your jab. Andre Sterling, best I follow him in that straight line. You're gonna get hurt. You're gonna get hurt, Andre. Don't do that. Jab, jab and faint. Jab and faint. There you go. Change the levels. There you go. There you go. Make, make a miss. Okay. Faint him. Faint him. Faint down to the right. So far, a lull in the action here in round nine. Still think Andre Sterling's winning this round. Oh, big right hand there from Craig Richards. Not much going on right now at the moment. Craig Richards begins to use his legs a bit more. So better, better finish the round there from Craig Richards, but I'm still giving that one to Andre Sterling. Yo, true school, I feel you. I feel Derek James overrated too. Freddie Roach 2.0. I'm not, I'm not gonna go that far. He's not overrated. Um, Jamal Charlo to me is a is a lower B class fighter. Um, he's not someone that should have went as far as he's went. To be honest with you, and the big reason he's went as far as he went is because of Derek James. I don't think he would have reached the level he reached without Derek James. So you can't say that. To see what he's done with Charlo, that that's a testament to its own. And then, you know, Derek James is working with Earl Spence. I mean, come on. He's taking Earl Spence from the ground up to where he is now. Derek James is a fantastic trainer. I'm going to highly disagree with you on that. I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Derek James also trains Rob Brant, too. I think he's still training Rob Brant. So, um, yeah, I'm going to disagree with you on that one. But back to this fight, Andre Stilling versus Craig Richards. Uh, I got Richards winning uh, six of the nine rounds that I've concluded so far. I got numbered by two points because the knockdown makes it only more by two points on my card. So here we go, round 10. It looks like uh, Craig Richards is beginning to use his legs a bit more. And, he, and he's, trying to, he's trying to get Andre Sterling to walk straight into something. Good right hand there from Andre Sterling, again. One thing about Sterling that, I, that, that, that you notice right away is when he fights, his eyes are as wide as this. So when you see a fighter with the eyes that wide, it means they're really focused. And he's got, he seems to have his best quality from what I've seen in this fight, seems to be his focus, knowing what to do, when to do, and how to do it. I 
Decent right hand there from Richards. I'm not sure that one landed though. I don't know. I don't know what landed. Good double jab there from Craig Richards. He needs to do more of that. There's not, there's not enough of that. He needs to do that more. I don't understand. You're bigger than him. You got a good jab. Fucking use that stick. Use that, use that stick. Use that telephone pole. Use that, use that motherfucking telephone pole. There you go. I'm watching it on Bitbox. Uh, hey, she. I'll, I'll drop the comment. I'll drop, I'll, I'll, I'll drop the link. Give me a second. There's a link. For those of you that want to watch with me, there's a link. That link I just dropped down is that, that that's where I'm watching the fight right now. The fights, uh, well, it's on the zone, but I, I, I have, I'm watching it on Bitbox. I just dropped the link, so if you want to watch along with me, watch along. We're in the tenth round, the championship rounds, even though it's not for a champion, a title, I think. Um, oh, Craig Richards versus Andre Sterling, a good light heavyweight showdown. Ooh, another big right hand there from Andre Sterling. But Andre Sterling has had an answer for everything. He had, he's had an answer for everything Craig Richards has done. Good job there from Andre Sterling, and then Richards with a good right hand. Last 10 seconds here in the 10th round. Bro, that's another Andre Sterling round. Andre Sterling beating this boy. I thought he met your location, no. The fight is at your call, if you're wondering where, 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 where that fight is taking place, it's at your call. Over there in London. Boom! Right on the button. Yeah, but for those of you wondering, uh, I will be live later on for the DAZN fights featuring uh, Andrew Canseal and Alberto Machado. Should be really, really fun. Got uh, more and more. More and more and more and more and more amazing boxing content coming out here on True School Sports. So make sure you go check out all the videos that I dropped, all the Holyfield Bow stuff, all the interviews. I just did an interview with uh, Luna Tune Boxing, who does boxing cartoons. And I interviewed him about how that came to be and just his boxing cartoons. So go check, go check that out. Uh, I got an interview with Trevor Bryan I did, that, 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 that just dropped. Lots of great stuff dropping here on True School Sports that you should go check out if you haven't already. So trust me on that. But uh, round 11 of Craig Richards versus Andre Stilling. Through 10 rounds, I got uh, Andre Sterling winning six of the four rounds. Six of the four rounds, or you know, seven of the four rounds, actually. So I, I got Andre Sterling up by like three points. Craig Richards measuring Andre Sterling, trying to. There you go, good job there from Craig Richards. There you go, good, another good jab there from Craig Richards. Not enough jabbing from Craig Richards. Getting out jab on a smaller man. Losing the battle of real estate, you know. That's, it, no matter, win, lose, or draw, the one takeaway I'm going to have from this fight with Richards is that he's not, he does not know how to command range. But for a guy as big and as rangy with, with, with a jab as solid as him, he doesn't know how to use his range. Doesn't. As long as Craig Richards can avoid, or uh, Andre Sun can avoid that right hand of Richards, it'll be good. Because the one time Richards caught this man in the sixth round with that right hand, you know, it was a wrap. Yeah, so far, yeah, I would agree with you. Craig Richards is winning this round. Another good jab there from. Craig Richards, and he's jabbing from different angles, and he's on his toes, and he's fighting the way he shouldn't fight in the earlier rounds. 
I mean, I, I think I got stealing. I listen. I got I got stealing up by like three three points on my scorecard. I think stealing. Um, man, Tyrese with a big right hand. Uh oh, another big right hand and a left hook. Here we go. Here we go. I think he's got Andre Sterling hurt. Boom, on a left hook. Got his ass again. 38 seconds left here in the 11th round. Big right hand there from Andre Sterling. Andre Sterling just killed about 13 seconds there. Sterling looking to clinch. Again, Sterling the one that won. Alright, so round 11 has concluded. So I think that was I think that was Craig Richards' best round from the of the fight outside of the fight where he knocked uh, Sterling down. Actually, it's probably his most complete round of the fight because um, that round where Andre Sterling got knocked down, he was lighting Craig Richards up with right hands left, right, and center. So. Um, I, I thought that was the best round of the fight. Um, so what, that was round 11. So I got I got uh, Andre Sterling up seven rounds to four, which means I have him up by two points because of the knockdown. So I got Andre Sterling up by two points heading into the last heading into the last round. So either this fight's gonna conclude with me thinking Andre Sterling won by one point, or me Andre Sterling thinking think he won by by uh, three points. But either way, I'm a, I'm a, I haven't won in this fight. On my scorecard. Hopefully they give him the decision because I think he's earned it. I'm going to be very pissed if he does not get a decision because I think he's fought a brilliant fight, uh, being a smaller guy, commanding distance, commanding range, landing the right hand. I thought he's dominated uh, uh, Richards in, in many ways in this fight. Good body shot there from Sterling. That's off the 12th round. They promised that they will deliver a good fight, and it certainly has been a good fight. And it's all on the line here. It really is. I've got a level going into this final round. Good job there for Craig Richards. Well, Richards had that big round then in the, the sixth, I think it was, when he had it down. Shaky again, then in the last round. There you go, another, another, another decent jab there from Craig Richards. Richards' jab has certainly improved as the fight's gone on. The pace has slowed a little bit. I've got him with his nose in front here, but it's a close fight. You've got it there, level. Andre Sterling ties up Craig Richards. Through the first minute, not much going on in the first minute of the last round of this fight. But uh, Richards seems to be controlling things with a jab. He's slowing the pace down with the jab. When the pace slows down and he, he's able to not allow Sterling to throw punches and get his get his get his shots off. Um, he's able to do what he wants with, with Sterling. But those rounds have been so few and far between. But better stuff this round from um from Craig Richards. Good right hand and a left hook there from Craig Richards. And it looks like Andre Sterling's legs are a bit shaky. Good jab there from Craig Richards. Richards finishing strong, man. Uh oh, here we go. He, he's moving like an American. He's moving out here like a straight yank, side to side, with rhythm. Fifty-five seconds left here in the twelfth round between Andre Sterling and Craig Richards. And what's been a good fight so far? Very good fight. Good jab there from Craig Richards. He's, been, he, he's finishing off strong. Looking for that right hand over the top. Just overshot it there. And Andre Sterling sort of ties it up and walks him back to the, to the ropes. Thirty seconds left here in the last, last round of what's been a really good fight. Unless Sterling can bring something miraculous out of the back. 
playing the big right hand or something, but he hasn't. Looks like Bert Richards at any stage of the fight, so I'd be surprised if it happens now. Well, final few seconds, and Richards is looking flat, right hand over the top. Didn't quite manage to land it. The bell's set to go. All right, so I gave Craig Richards, that was a clear Craig Richards round, so I have it seven to five with the knockdown. That means I would highly have Andre Sterling winning by one point. So close fight, good fight, back to back, but I think Andre Sterling does deserve the nod. I don't think he's gonna get it. I think uh, Richards will get it, but I think Andre Sterling has done more than enough to get the nod in this fight. But a lot of times I know when you score, when you score fights, I know that a lot of times if you finish the fight very strong, that leaves a big impression in the judge's mind. So I have it, I have it, uh, seven five for uh, Andre Sterling. But the knockdown makes it a point, a point victory for Andre. It's like one fourteen, one thirteen, something like that for Andre Sterling. Very good fight though. This fight for me, it lived up to the hype that these guys are selling the public this week. They put on a good fight for the fans in London and South London. And I, I, I commend both Craig Richards and Andre Stilling for uh, being good boxers and, and being good warriors in the ring because it, it was a good fight. You know, you had the, uh, the shorter fighter and Stilling outboxing St uh, Craig Richards for the majority of the first half of the fight, countering him with the right, overhand right seemingly at will. But as the fight won and the pace slowed down, you saw Craig Richards settle in, land his jab. And it was, it was a good tactical fight. It was one of them fights that I really enjoyed. So, good fight. Thank you, Eddie Hearn. Well, he, he was jabbing up and down with the jab nicely. He was in putt, shucking well, and a good lead right hand. Yeah, that's what it is. But it's your boy BT. We're live here on True School Sports for this week, for, for this afternoon's car at your call. Uh, we just got done with the big domestic fight between Andre Sterling and Craig Richards. We're pacing away in the decision. Uh, Shannon Courtney had a fight earlier, her third professional fight. She stopped her opponent in the second round. Um, Charles Frankham. Oh, never mind. Here you go. Here comes the decision. Ian John Lewis scored this bout 117 to 111. Bob Williams scored this bout 116 to 111. And Terry O'Connor scored this bout 115 to 112. All three for your winner by unanimous decision from Crystal Palace. Oh, Red come on, man. Really? 117, 111? One that's a horrible score. I mean, I'm not mad at him getting the decision. I think it's a close fight. But Jesus. Horrible. Horrible. I knew I knew Andre Stiller wasn't getting no decision. No way in hell. That boy got outboxed. Straight up. He got outboxed. Close fight, but I thought he got outboxed. They robbed they rob my they rob my man, Andre Stilling. Yo, I fucks on I like Andre Stilling. I'm, I wanna watch him again. He's, he's a good fighter. He was like he was lining him up whenever he wanted with right hand. I mean he had no power, but I'm saying so Matt, they're still scoring you? shots, you gotta count them. So Matt, what did you make horrible the scorecards. Horrible, Come horrible on, scorecards. 16, I mean based on them scorecards, based on those scorecards, that's a gift decision. I'm sorry, I, I, that is a gift decision if I've ever seen one. I mean a close fight, but when the scorecards are that wide and you get the decision that's horrible. That's bad. That'll, that'll be that'll be a video later on in the week. That'll be a video. You guys will get a video later on in the week about Craig Richard versus Andre Stillman. That was bad. That was horrible. He should not brag. Please thank, please thank God. I give him that. You know, having his own in for this fight week. Uh, big shout out to Andre. He tried to step up quick and come for the fight. You know, good heart on him and his team. Um, and obviously, thank you to Eddie Hearn, Match and Boxing. Oh, and what, a bad, what a bad score card. Oh, they really helped you. They really helped you, Craig. You got a gift. You got a gift, champ. 
Hey, well, yeah, of course you gotta thank him. They gave you lots of help on them scorecards. Horrible. You're right, PC Jacob was horrible. Blow him out. You getting out box, champ? Oh my god, you getting out box. He was walking you into right hands. He was out jabbing you. He was making you look silly in the first half of the fight. Are you shitting me? Don't talk like you're more skilled than Andre Sterling. Craig. I mean, he finished strong. I'll give him that. But fuck. 118. 117, 111. No, oh my god, not. Then is your rematch. That was horrible. That was horrible. Fucking gift. Straight up. Thank God, thank Al Heyman, thank Al Heyman. All this week I focused on one guy, that was Andre Serling. As we saw, he's a tough cookie. No, overlooked him. Start focus on the job like this. What a, what a horrible, I'm just, it was a good fight. I give Craig Richards his credit. He got better as the fight went on, so I, I can't take that away from him. But 117, 111, oh my God, I can't get over that. Eddie Hearn, you really, that direct deposit must have hit the judge's bank account early. Jesus. and Andre Sterling have a great performance. I think Craig against Gratz is a great fight. Joshua Gratz has got plans to move on. To world level this year. Almost I'm DMing Eddie Hearn after this fight. This is, I, I, after I get off a lot, I'm DMing Eddie Hearn. This is bullshit. What a gift. Joshua Watsi will smoke Craig Richards. Craig Richards, has, Craig Richards has no prayer in hell against Joshua Watsi. I'm sorry. No way. Joshua Watsi can, can go beat up some of these light heavyweight champions right now. Never mind Craig Richards. Don't do that to Craig, Eddie. Have 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 some respect for him. Don't do that to Craig. Don't don't put him through the ringer against Joshua Watts. He's gonna get destroyed. Craig. Ugh. I mean, Craig. Craig had some moments, but overall, his performance was was was. was very disappointing, I'll be honest with you. Based on what I saw in a, in, in a previous fight, I was not impressed at all, one bit, with what I saw with Craig Richards tonight. Um, but it was a good fight. He got better as it went on. Um, I'm pretty pissed off of how, how they fucked Andre Sterling. Andre Sterling should have won that fight. But that's boxing, that's the business we're in. Um, Lands the yeah, like one one of the one of the pundits on 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 Sky Sports had Andre Sterling beating. Four rounds who? Oh my God. These Sky Sports pundits are so up Craig Richards' ass. Are you serious? That's horrible. That's horrible. You guys are so far at match from boxing's ass. Are you serious? Andre Sterling won this fight. You got me. You got. You got me. Honestly, you got me fucked up. Straight up. You. You tripping? He was outboxing him. He was chopping his body early. He made. He was making Craig Richards look silly early on. Overhand rights for days. I mean, Jesus Christ! If 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 if, if freaking it felt it felt like Andre Stel Andre Stelling was feeding Craig, Craig Richards the right hand. Yes, like it looked like you you know when you, you know when you see a baby and a baby sitting down in a chair and you feed the baby a, a, a spoonful of cereal. That's what Andre Stelling's right hand was for, for for Craig Richards for the first six rounds of this fight. It was a bowl full of cereal. Fucking ridiculous, man. That's horrible. Eddie Hearn, yo. I'm, I'm, I'm about to get an Eddie Hearn's ass after this. Eddie, Eddie Hearn is getting it. That's horrible. What a, what a robbery. What a robbery. Honestly, Craig Richards isn't a bad fighter. I, I mean, I, I, he's cool. But after, after this fight, I hope Joshua Bwasi smokes him. I hope Josh, I, I hope they put him in there with Joshua Bwasi and Joshua Bwasi smokes him. I'm so pissed off right now. Because Andre Sterling is one of these guys who who, who is kind of le learning on the job. He didn't have a big amateur background. And he took a step-up fight against Craig, Craig Richards. And then he beats him and outboxes him and doesn't get his decision for it. Fucking bullshit. I call a spade a spade, man. Well, you actually turned to me and said the 
right hand was up in the air, and then the right hand went up at the start, and you were like, yeah. you're going to be Yeah, that's what it was. Andre Sterling's, Andre Sterling's right hand was, was, was a big spoon full of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and he was feeding it all day. He was feeding it all day to Craig Richards whenever he wanted and however he wanted to do it. He just had no power. Craig, Craig Richards should get on, when Craig Richards gets home tonight and he gets alone, he should get on his knees, he should look up to God, and he should say, Lord, I want to just give you thanks for protecting me in the ring and, and, and not giving Andre Sterling any power because if Andre Sterling had any sort of power, Craig Richards Craig Richard, Craig Richard would be spending the next four to five months in the hospital, straight up. Horrible defense for the most of this fight. Not, not really impressed with his performance. So, it is what it is. I'll be sounding off about this after I get off here with Eddie Hearn. Um, but then our next fight will be um, Ted Cheeseman versus Kieran Conway for the British uh, Super, Super Welterweight title. So I, I believe the winner of this fight will be going into a fight with Scott Fitzgerald next, who just beat Anthony Fowler. So that should be good, if that's the truth, if that's what's going to happen. But uh, Ted Cheeseman needs this fight because Ted Cheeseman, ha he lost his last fight to Sergio Garcia. I was live for that. He got absolutely blown out, destroyed, pieced up, whatever adjective you want to use. He disappointed me on the night, so I'm looking forward to a, a balanced back performance from Ted Cheeseman. Eddie Hearn is about to get stick under his comments. Yeah, he's going to get a lot from me. He's gonna get a lot from me, and Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn follows me on Instagram, so I'm tagging him on Instagram stories. I'm messaging him, and he's gonna see it. He's, he 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 may not respond, but he sees he, he sees what I post. So well, I'm, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna tell Eddie everything straight up. Don't even you better you you, you you better go put Craig Richards in there with like uh, Wadi Camacho or one of those bums. You know, I won't call him bums, but one of those lower level fighters. You know, because he, he ain't fucking with no Joshua Boazzi. Joshua Boazzi is going to retire him. <sighs> Andre Stone, man. They robbed my man Andre Stone. I like Andre Stone. He won, me, he won me over in that fight because he was showing me skills, man. He was he was a short, he was about a good two inches shorter than Craig Richards. He's a he up jab, slip, out boxing him, right hand, over the top, boom, slipping, going to the body. Up jab, up jab, slip. Oh. He was good, man. I mean, for a guy with as little boxing experience as he has, he showed some skills in this fight. Outboxing a bigger guy, counter punching, leading with the right hand. You know, he showed the savvy many times in this fight uh, to lean up on on Craig Richards, tie him up, walk him to the corner. You know, I thought he, I thought he won this fight. Close fight, but he should, he, he should have got the nod. Should have got the nod. Morning, George. It's gonna be a scorcher. Indeed, Admiral. And with one tippity tap, I can turn off my heating at home. With one tippity tap. Or is it this button? Watch these UK commercials. See what you guys have for commercials in the UK. Dear oh dear, thinks the Admiral. Life shouldn't be so complicated. Luckily, George has Admiral Multicolor car and home insurance all in one place. Yeah. Big shout out to Admiral Admiral Home Multi Coverage. That UK insurance. Admiral Multi Cover on your ass, straight up. <laughs> but uh, it's your boy BT. We're live here on True School Sports. We've been live for almost two hours. It's been really, really fun. Right now, we're, we're going dolo, solo dolo. But uh, my dad will be live later on for the Alberto Machado, Andrew Cancillo rematch live on the zone. So, should be fun. Should be a fun time. But yeah, you guys, drop, drop your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think about the, the fight card so far. What you thought about that last fight if you had a chance to watch it. Give me your questions. Let me know what city, what state, what continent you're watching from. If you want to support the channel and like what I'm doing, why don't you uh, super chat if you, if you feel led to. You know, I ain't going to beg, but it's there if you want to. Um, what else? Subscribe, like. Speaking of British boxing, who is the best British boxer who isn't named Tyson Fury? That is a great question. Easy answer though. Great question, easy answer. His name is Joshua Buatzi. I'm a big fan of Joshua Buatzi. I, I, I really have high hopes for him. I think he's going to be a, a really good heavyweight champion. I think he can go in the right now and smoke most of the heavyweight champions right now. Straight up. I think he's that good. Um, I like him a lot. I like him a lot, man. I, th I, I rate Buatzi higher than Warrington. I rate Buatzi higher than Kell Brook. I rate Buatzi higher than, um, who else is there in British boxing? There's a, 
higher than Anthony Joshua? I, I, I don't know about that one, but uh, he's more skilled than Anthony Joshua. And I think uh, he's got more... Uh, he, he's got a chance to have more longevity than Anthony Joshua because I feel like he's a more complete fighter than Anthony Joshua. But, you know, he, compare heavyweights to a light heavyweight, it's different because it's a whole different beast. So, Anthony Joshua, Joshua Boatsy, I would say it's, it's kind of like 1A and 1B for me. And I want to be the first. To be honest, I'm in the best, I'm the best man I've been in for a long while. I'm confident, my mind's fresh. I'm really fit, and I can't wait to get in the ring and do the business. Now. All right, so oh, okay. yeah, maybe I'm our next fight is uh, going to be uh, the Ted Cheeseman. The Cheeseman. I love Ted Cheeseman. Big fan and, uh, of his. Ted Cheeseman, he's fighting uh, Kieran Conway for the British title. Winner of this fight will move on to bigger and better things. So, big, uh, big fight, man. Big, big fight for these guys at your call. Okay, let's get straight to it then. Kieran Conway about to ring walk. I'm telling you right now, if there is a show, if there's ever a show at your call uh, in the UK while I'm there, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm going to it. There's our boy Adam Smith. He's just Adam Smith. Now, ladies and gentlemen, entering the arena, please welcome the challenger fighting out of Northampton, Kieran Tuklas Conway. A British title tilt at just three weeks' notice for KC, the former decent amateur and well schooled professional. Woo! Kieran Conway got that funk. He's coming out of some like reggae stuff. I don't know what he's coming out to, but it sounds good. <laughs> but yeah, Joshua Boazzi, uh Anthony Joshua and Joshua Boazzi, one A and one B. I don't know much about Kieran Conway, but these announcers are really hyping him up, and he's and he's bigger than Ted Cheeseman, so and he's walking into with with a lot of swagger, so don't, I, I hope you don't have me fooled. I hope he's actually come out here and, and, and fight. Ted Cheeseman. The big cheese. Let's go, champ. I was born by the river. Yeah, he has the big cheese on his t-shirt. I love Ted. Uh, Ted Cheeseman, look, I don't, I don't think Ted Cheeseman's ever going to win a world title or be a, a great world level fighter. But as far as at domestic level in, in, in the UK, I, I love Ted Cheeseman. He's, he's, he's always an entertaining fight. So we'll see, man, if he, if he can uh, uh, readjust himself from that loss to Sergio Garcia. Sergio Garcia beat the shit out of him when they fought. The Bermondsey banger. Come on, Ted. He's only 23. He can still make something of himself in boxing. David Diamante. That, that, that guy, that, David Diamante hasn't got a haircut in like five years. Jesus. He needs to cut his hair. How, how you wear a tuxedo with a bow tie and, you, and your hair is all the way down past your, your ass like a bitch, like a woman? Like you gotta, like, like, David Diamante needs to get a haircut. He needs to chop that hair off. It's too damn long. He's not, I mean, unless he's Jamaican. If he's Jamaican, maybe, maybe I can accept it, but I don't think he's Jamaican. Marcus McDonald, from Birmingham, Terry O'Connor, and from Watford, 
Bob Williams. Your timekeeper from Bron Lee is Mr. Bob Edgeworth. And at the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring from Chillingham, A star referee, Mr. Ian John Lewis. Ian John Lewis. Let's go, champ. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the British Super Welterweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, standing with his head trainer and father, Aaron Conway. Conway. He's got some pretty sick trunks. He's got... His initials KC with the British flag in the in the letters. That that, that that's pretty damn cool, if you ask me. I think it's pretty damn cool. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. Come on, Ted. With his head trainer, Tony the big Sims. cheese. He wears it the white with blue and silver. He scaled 10 stone, 12 pounds, 7 ounces. His professional record, 15 victories, only one defeat. He has nine wins coming by way of knockout. <laughs> Tonight, he makes his maiden defense of the... Has Carter been fought? No, he hasn't yet. We still have, we still have this fight. And then after this fight is uh, Arthur Jones the third, Arthur Jones the third, one of the top American amateurs. He'll be making his uh, British debut, and then after that is uh, Conor Ben. So we got a couple more fights. Bum City, what's up, champ? No, it's not the co-main event. We still have Arthur Jones the third. War cheese, war cheese. Kick his ass, Ted. He didn't want no smoke. He got that pretty boy haircut like he's from Essex or something. We don't want no smoke. Punch that boy square in his mouth, Ted. Crucial crossroads clash here for both of these 23 year olds. Ted Cheeseman Beat his ass. trying to rid the mental and physical demons of that painful first defeat at European level. If any, it's Lonsdale Belt, an important business with challenger. All right, Kieran so round Conway one Ted Cheeseman versus Kieran Conway. For the British 154 pound title. Ted Cheeseman in the white trunks, Kieran Conway in the black trunks. They both got sparkles on the trunks. So far, uh, Kieran Conway, I've never seen a fight, so I'm just gonna say, so far, he, his shots seem like they come from a good place. Like, he seems pretty well schooled, but we'll, we'll see how well schooled he is in the fourth, fifth round when he gets tired. Good body shot there on the inside by Ted Cheeseman. Oh, okay. And MTK had a show today. I didn't even they had a show going on today. Good left hook there by Kieran Conway. Another body shot there from Ted Cheeseman. That left hook really seems to be working for him. That left hook to the body. When he slips to his, when he dips to his left, it's there for him. Ooh, good overhand right and a left hook by Ted Cheeseman. Come on, Ted. Kick his ass. Woo. A good jab there by Ted Cheeseman as he plots forward and sticks that stiff jab in his face. Right now, Kieran Conway is having a hard time timing Ted Cheeseman. Might take him a couple rounds. But a good body shot there from Kieran Conway. But Ted Cheeseman follows up with a three punch combination of his own. There you go. A faint and then a one two there from Kieran Conway. Still has to work out the range and find out, find the right spacing on his on his shots. But when you watch Kieran Conway throw punches, they come from a decent place. Not a bad looking fighter. Just never, he's never been at this level before. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how he deals with it as the fight progresses. But so far, Ted Chi's been making his life very hard, very difficult. As he plods forward and lands a jab and then goes upstairs and then goes downstairs. Jesus, Ted Cheeseman. He's cutting them up like a piece of cheese. A piece of Swiss cheese. Let's go, champ. 
Body shot there from Ted Cheeseman. Good, consistent work here from Ted Cheeseman. Taking his time. Good body shot there from Ted again. And a jab from Ted. And Kieran Conway tie, manages to tie him up. Ooh. So, good first round. Um, I think Ted won that pretty clearly. Uh, doing the more sustained work, going to the body, uh, jabbing him, using a, stick, a good stiff jab. Something we didn't see from him that kind of went absent in the Sergio Garcia fight. Because Sergio Garcia completely and utterly outclassed him. But uh, so far in the first round of his uh, rebound fight, so far so good with Ted Cheeseman. What do you guys think about Ted Cheeseman's first round? I thought it was pretty good stuff from him. But uh, I didn't know there was a, there was an MTK uh, show going on. Big shout out to the fine folks at MTK. Boxing on Sky Sports. Yeah, it's a small house. Friday night show live on, on YouTube right now on IFL. But I stopped watching for Cheeseman and mostly Ben. Okay. Yeah, damn, IFL. IFL got boxing shows? It's crazy. Let me know. So, round two Ted Cheeseman versus Kieran Conway. Kieran Conway looking to settle into a good rhythm. Ted Cheeseman trying to get back on track after a horrible loss to Sergio Garcia. So far, Kieran Conway, uh, for as classy of a boxer as he, as he presents himself as, he has not get, been able to get the respect of Ted Cheeseman by hitting on anything solid, solidly enough to get his respect and back off. Ted's just plodding forward, moving his head left, moving his head right, you know, good jab. Like, Sergio Garcia was able to avoid all that because Sergio Garcia got his respect early. Kieran Conway's got to get Ted Cheeseman's respect early. Double jab there from Kieran Conway, nothing doing there. Right hand, nothing doing there. Good jabs this Sunday by Ted Cheeseman, setting up a big right hand up top. Trying to set one big right hand up top. Okay. Ted Cheeseman continues to plod forward. Kieran Conway can't really get him off of him. Oh, good up a cut from, Ted, from Conway. He's doing a bit better handling the pressure this round, but I think Ted's still doing his thing. Ted's still getting his ass. There you go. There you go. Good little shoeshine combination to the stomach there from Ted Cheeseman on Kieran Conway. Conway began to land his jab though, so good good signs here from Conway. You know, he's he throwing uppercuts, hooks around the guard at times. Um, but I think he's still lacking in that power department. He needs to really pivot on those shots. And I, it's going to be hard for him to get, for him to pivot on those shots to get leverage if he's constantly backing up. You know, only the most skilled fighters in the world can get leverage moving backwards. You know, only Puerto Ricans can do that. <laughs> there you go, Ted Cheeseman doing his thing. Jab to the stomach, right hand up top. Conway, one thing I know is he, he throw, when he throws the right hand, sometimes he throws the right hand and, and, and his chin follows his right hand. And he, ha he has his chin coming over his knee, which is not a good thing. He needs to stop doing that. Ted Cheeseman gonna catch his, he's going to catch his ass with a left hook. Better stop. Oh, jab there from Ted Cheeseman. There you go. Good right hand off the road from Kieran Conway. I mean, he's not a bum. He just he doesn't know how to command range, and he seems a bit out of his depth, you know. And Ted Cheeseman's been at British level for quite some time, um, and Ted Cheeseman like has fought a guy who I think will become a solid world fighter, world level fighter in Garcia. So when you have that kind of experience, I, I just don't see how Kieran Conway will beat Ted Cheeseman. But he doesn't look like a horrible fighter. Yes. 
Today is as is America's version of the Queen. Marcella bought an email of America's version of the Queen. Got me messed up. Are you serious? I just saw a commercial and they were like, Who was America's version of the Queen? It's not Michelle. And they said, Michelle Obama. No, it's not Michelle Obama. Got me messed up. But Ted Cheese and beating uh, Karen Conway's ass right now. Opening him up, touching him downstairs, come back up top. Conway's got good footwork, decent, decent boxer, but out of his depth against Ted Cheeseman, I think. You know, I believe they were saying earlier that uh, Conway was like a, a, a Midlands champion or something like that. You know, so he, he's only conquered the Midlands level. He's never been the British level. So we're here in round three of Ted Cheeseman versus Kieran Conway. And um, Ted Cheeseman's having his way with him right now. The pressure he's putting on him, you know, it's been very difficult for Conway to deal with. Conway's dealt well with it in spots, and I think he's, I think his movement, I think his movement, his good movement is saving him right now. Um, Conway's best quality is probably his movement. Ooh, good right hand, there, good right counter there by Conway. Man, another right hand there by Conway. Okay, come on, Kieran Conway. There you go. Left hook, uppercut by Ted Cheeseman. There you go. Good body shot there from Kieran Conway, and then he ties him up. Okay, Kieran Conway with some, with some, uh, with some smart boxing here. My child versus can see it too. No, that, that's not on right now, but I'll be live for it later. Yeah, if you're asking, I'll be, I'll be live for it later on around 7, 7 or 8 o'clock. So we got a full three days of work here on True School Sports. I know tomorrow we got the Paul Emile Najee versus Artem LaBeouf bare knuckle fighting, so I might I might go, go ahead and uh, go live for that. Oh, you know, for those of you who, who are here, who, I, who, I, who weren't here earlier when I asked, does anybody here want to see me go live for Paul Emile Naji versus Artem Labov bare knuckle fighting? If you want to see me go live for Paul Emile Naji versus Artem Labov bare knuckle fighting, let me know in the comments down below. Yes or no? Because I am a man of the people, and I'll give the people what they want. Woo. Ted Cheeseman with some body shots, Jesus. Someone said, I'll be here for Malinaji versus Laval. That is soon. So oh, I haven't heard anybody tell me no. So I, I think if I, get my, if, I, if I get my money tomorrow, I might just go ahead and just buy that pay-per-view, that, that $15 pay-per-view and go live for it here on True School Sports. But in the meantime, we're going to enjoy Ted Cheeseman as he's whooping Kira Conway's ass. But, you know, Kieran Conway's settling into a good rhythm. I, he's been able to land some good right hands up top into the body, and, and, and I'm hoping he can maintain this because uh, Conway is a, is a, it's not a horrible fight. I just, again, like, like I said, I think he's out of his depth, and the stream just started lagging on me. There you go. And on a certain level, the European we saw it didn't work last time. Good defense there by Kieran Conway. Okay. Better round for Kieran Conway, but I'm gonna edge at the Ted Cheeseman still. I think I think Kieran Conway needs to do a bit more. Prime El Travisio Jorge Arce versus Roman Chalatino Gonzalez. Listen, Jorge, Jorge Arce was a, was a fantastic fighter in his day. Um, I know he gave. I know he, I know it'd be a really good fantasy fight, but we're talking about Roman Chalatino Gonzalez here. It, it, ain't too many fighters, and as far as small fighters go. Uh, that I think could beat a prime Roman Gonzalez. I think like, if you want to know a good fight, I think maybe like Roman Gonzalez versus um, Michael Carbajal, that'd be a good fight. Or Roman Gonzalez versus Chiquita Gonzalez, that'd be a good fight. Or maybe Roman Gonzalez versus Bobby Chacon. These are, these are the fights that I think fantasy fights, if we're talking fantasy fights of the great little men, I think these are the kind of fights that would give Roman Gonzalez some problems. Conway looks like a good boxer, but he's feather fisted. Yeah, he is. He's feather fisted, and if you look at the way he throws his punches, you know, he, 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 doesn't, he, he doesn't sit down on his shots. He's, he's, he's throwing a lot of arm punches. He's got the right ideas. Like, he's got the right ideas. He's got the right imagination. Um, he faints. He jabs. He moves. But he doesn't sit down on his punches. And he's throwing a lot of arm punches, which is a problem a lot of young fighters have. 
Roman would destroy Carbajal? I mean, look, I love Chavo Tito as much as anybody else, but he ain't, he ain't gonna destroy Michael Carbajal. You got, got me, you got me messed up. You got me messed up. Romo Gonzalez versus Carbajal would be crazy. But I think he beat him though. I, I, I got Romo Gonzalez beating Carbajal. Woo! Good body shot there by Conway and then a left hook. Come on, Kieran Conway. Don't let Ted Chiwin just beat your ass like that. Good jab there by Kieran Conway. An uppercut that partially lands. He needs to turn that turn that shoulder more on the uppercut. Turn that shoulder. Good jab there by Ted Cheeseman. Conway's getting tired. He's being to drop his hands. He's being to drop his hands and try to find like he's Josh Kelly or some shit. He's like dropping his hands. Go, good body shot there by Kieran Conway. Conway's getting some confidence. But that has a discouraged Chief and Chief is still plotting forward. Ooh, good defense there by Kieran Conway. Good job there by Ted Cheeseman. Ooh, big left hook there from Ted Cheeseman on Kieran Conway. Conway's still fighting, man. Is he cut behind his neck? He's cut behind his neck. Why is he cut behind his neck? It's weird. Good left hook there from Kieran Conway. I think Conway's winning this round. Those would be exceptional fights it's too. How about Inoye versus Roman Gonzalez at 112? If they were to fight at 112, who wins? Will you be at the Democratic debate next week in Miami? Probably not. No, not, not really. I'll probably watch it on TV. I'm not really a, a, a big fan of any of the candidates, so there's no reason for me to go. And honestly, I got too much shit going on to go to the Democratic debate in Miami. You know what though? Maybe, maybe, maybe I can still I can, I can go to the debate because it, it will be a big event, and I, I can start asking people. Yo, I want to I want to ask you guys. I, I just got an idea. What if hey? What if I made a video? What if I went to the, the to the Miami Democratic debate and I went out there with pictures of Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, and Anthony Joshua, and I and I asked people, do you know who this guy is? And I filmed it on camera. What what, what, what would you guys think about a video like that? Like if I actually went out with big ass like poster boards. Like imagine a poster board, and imagine on the poster board I had Wilder, Fury, Joshua, and I asked everybody, do you know who these guys are? And I'll play that game. How many, how, how many people know who this guy is and that guy is? That'd be pretty funny. I'll tell you this though, on um, Saturday, this Saturday, or tomorrow, I'll be going to the 5th Street Gym in Miami because I'm going to go, go interview Chris Algieri. Chris Algieri is having a book signing tomorrow. Um, Chris Algieri is having a book signing tomorrow at the, um, at the 5th Street Gym for his new book. He just released a new book called The Fighter's Kitchen. So I'll be going down there and I'll be getting up with Chris Algieri. So it should be fun. That would be hilarious. Get some stuff. You know what? We're going to do that. Hey, um, Bolas, when is, when, is, when is the Democratic National Debate and where is it? If you know, if you know, could you inform me? Like, when is it and where is it? I want to know. Oh, good uppercut from Kieran Conway. I gave the last one to Kieran Conway. I thought Kieran Conway boxed better in the last round, so I, I got a 3-1 Ted Cheeseman. Man, good defense on the road by Kieran Conway. To this day. Ted 
I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna run that idea by my dad later on and see what he thinks about it. Oh, well, these de 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 right hand from Ted Cheeseman, but he got no leverage on that punch. Conway seems to be really settling in and getting some confidence here. Ted Cheeseman needs to uh, iron him out if he can. Good defense from Kieran Conway. He can slip like four punches. Okay, Kieran Conway. In a left hook. Two left hooks. In a right hand. In a left hook. Ooh. Kieran Conway, he's cooking with cold grease. He's showing some skills. Ooh, another body something Kieran Conway. Oh my gosh, he's pushing him off and he's pivoting. Ooh, Kieran Conway. Oh my god, Kieran Conway's having his best round of the fight. He's beating the shit. He's he's clean he's schooling Ted Teason right now. And Ted Teason's bleeding from his nose. Yo, Kieran Conway. Yo, Ted Cheeseman, he better not lose his fight. This would be horrible for him if he lost, if he lost this fight. If he lost this fight, this would be horrible for him. He can't be losing to Kieran Conway, straight up. Can't be doing that. Okay, come on. My stream out here lagging. Lagging and lacking. She, he says, uh, Inouye versus Roman be great. I lean more towards Inouye. I ain't mad at that. But if they fought at 112, I'm going with my boy Charlotte Tito. 115 and above, Inouye. But 112 below, Roman. Easy. They would they were supposed to fight at 115 or 112. So if it would have been at 112, I would have had Ron with ironing that boy out. Yeah, Con yeah. I got a 3-2 for Ted Cheeseman as well. Kieran Conway with Willie seems to be picking up some good momentum, gaining confidence, hurting Ted Cheeseman. Um, I mean, geez, he was on the ropes, landed a left hook, double left hook, right hand, left hook again, uppercut, stepped back. Jeez, why is this lagging on me? Why are you lagging on me? Why are you lagging on me? Really warming up now. <sighs> I might go ahead and just do that though. I might um uh, go to the, to the Democratic National Convention and start asking people. I'm gonna have a big poster board with pictures of Fury, Wilder, and um, Joshua. <laughs> and I'm gonna ask random ass people in Miami if you know these guys are and get it on camera. That would be hilarious. At Super Flyweight, no, I'd favor Anoye. No, yeah. But uh, 112 and below. Moment. Easy. Yo, Kieran Conway's beginning to, to really have his way. He's, fi he's finally getting the right spacing on his shots. Ted Cheeseman's come forward style is not having the same effect it was. And now Kieran Conway's countering off the ropes seemingly at will. The Democrats would probably ban boxing. They probably the, Demo, the the Democrats would probably uh, the Democrats would probably want equal pay for women's fighters. And they want to bring they want to bring socialism into boxing. We ain't having it. We ain't having it. <laughs> Come on, man. What, what's up with the stream? Why is it, why are you doing this, to me, champ? I'm missing out. There you go, Kieran Conway off the ropes. Now, see, now Ted Cheeseman, Ted Cheeseman is not having the problems that Conway was having earlier. Ted Cheeseman can't seem to get the spike spacing on his shots. Conway's pressing forward. Conway's kind of walking him down, and he's beginning to light him up from the outside. What's up, Dad? Everybody say what's happening. Everybody say what's up to my dad in the comments. What's up, dad? Oh, hey, dad, since you're here, I wanted to run this by you. Someone in the comments suggested that we should go to the Democratic National uh, con uh, Convention to, to the debate. And I was telling them I had an idea of us getting a poster board. If, if we get a poster board, 
and we put Fury Wilder and Joshua on it, and we go to the Democratic National Convention and ask people if they know who Anthony Joshua, Fury, or Wilder is. Like, we'll just ask, do you know who any of these guys are? And we'll play a game. What do you think, Dad? I don't even know what the debate is. Man, Karen Conway's beating his ass. So that's another clear Kieran Conway round. I got to even fight. I never thought I'd be saying that. Kieran Conway really came to fight, man. Got to give him credit. Stepping up. He's rising to the occasion. As the fight goes on, you see Kieran Conway get more confidence, rising to the occasion, and get better. So big shout out to him. But it's your boy BT. We're live here on True School Sports. It is currently 4.29 p.m. in Hollywood, Florida. All right. Right now, we're in the midst of a fight between Kieran Conway and Ted Cheeseman. And man, Kieran Conway shows some real skills. Like, he'll step back, he'll change angle, pivot, boom, right hook. Conway showing some good skills, man. I, I, I got to say, man, he, he, was, he was acting like a fighter earlier, but now in the ring, he's behaving like a fighter. And I, and I respect that, you know, in a fight like this. Let's go, champ. Equal pay for women. When Katie Taylor got 1 million pounds for robbing her 200k victim, Delphine Persia, yeah, that was pretty bad. Is Ted's nose supposed to look bad? Yeah, it looks bad, bro. His, his nose, no, I mean, Kieran Conway only has like three knockouts in 12 fights. He's, not, he, he's feather fisted. And he's piecing up Ted Cheeseman left, right, and center. Lighting him up like a, like, like a damn Christmas tree. All right, he's looking like Carl Foch and Lee the Alcoholic. Yo, big shout out to Lee the Alcoholic Foch. He has a fight coming up soon. Big shout out to Ty and Booth. I'm waiting for the next Ty and Booth video. Ooh, big uppercut and a left hook by Kieran Conway on Ted Cheeseman. Jesus. Yo, the big cheese taking too much punishment, man. It's not good for him. Kieran Conway about to get him out of here. Conway's boxing wonderfully. Kieran Conway's really settled into a good rhythm. Brad Barrett says Big Cheese is going to get a W. I hope so, man. I like Ted Cheeseman, but right now he's taking too much punishment. And if he gets a win fighting like this, it's a, it's a gift decision. Straight up, because Kieran Conway's beating his ass. Another left hook there off the ropes. And a left hook from Cheeseman. Big right hand, or not big right hand, but right hand from Cheeseman that lands. Ted Cheeseman throwing a lot of punches, but not a lot of these are landing. But the, the, the judges could be seeing these punches and scoring them for Cheeseman. So Conway's got to maintain a good work rate and make sure he lands the eye, some eye catching shots of his own. There you go, good body shot there from Kieran Conway. And a left hook up top by Kieran Conway. Karen Conway, Midland's very own. He wants all the smoke. I can see a lot of holes in Cheeseman's game. That's funny. Good of a cut there from Karen Conway. Karen Conway fights like a bootleg Josh Kelly. I, I, I like Karen Conway. I like Karen Conway. Karen Conway is a decent little fighter. Woo! Good body shot by right by Karen Conway. I don't know, man. I've seen a lot of Ted Cheeseman fights. Every Ted Cheeseman fight I've seen, he always brawls. I never see him box anybody. I mean, he's gonna have a short career. He, he keeps having fights like this. He's gonna have a short career. I mean, right now he's he's fighting a feather-fisted fighter, but you know if he's fighting someone with more power, he'd be in big trouble. Kieran Conway won that round, so I got Kieran Conway up now. He's taking control of this fight, counter with his counter punching, with his jabs, with his ring general ring generalship, his movement. Um, Kieran Conway is taking a, a, a foothold in this fight. 
I mean, Ted's still landing some big shots of his own, but but Conway, Conway's really settling into a good rhythm. He's counter punching. He's slipping punches. Looked absolutely marvelous. It's been blue cheese since round four, brother. Exactly, and blue cheese is trash. So. So Kieran Conway, you know, might be, might, but might be, we might be in the midst of an upset. We should have had an upset in the last fight, but Eddie Hearn and, and Matthew Boxing, they robbed Andre Sterling. Straight up. Robbed him. White ass scorecards. But anyway, round eight, Ted Cheezer versus, um, Ted Cheezer versus Kieran Conway. I got Kieran Conway up by a round four, th four rounds to three. No knockdown so far, so uh, Kieran Conway is up by a point. It is your boy, BT. We are live here on True School Sports, and this is the Conor Bent official Life Fight Reaction. So, hope you guys are enjoying it wherever you're at, whatever city, state, continent you're, you're, you're at. You know, you can let me know in the comments down below, and I'll shout you guys out. Um, Ted Cheezer pressing forward, trying to make something of this fight, you know. Um, you know, good triple jab there by Kieran Conway. Ooh, big left hook there by Ted Cheeseman, and he overshoots the right, and Kieran Conway ties him up through the first 30 seconds and some change of this fight. There you go. Good body shots on the inside by Ted Cheeseman. Woo! But then Kieran Conway fires back with an uppercut of his own. And he said, you ain't gonna come over my, in, in, in my wheelhouse and just have your way with you, Ted Cheeseman. You gotta earn my respect. Kieran Conway ain't impressed with Ted Cheeseman. He, he came into this fight thinking he could win the fight, but now he's fighting like a fighter who knows he can win this fight. Good defense by Kieran Cowan on the ropes. It is worth knowing, like, like, like the announcer just said, uh, Kieran Conway has never been 12 rounds, so this is a big step up for him. And the mini tech can break him down in the championship rounds. But so far, Kieran Conway is holding his ground through the eighth round. He seems to be doing all right for himself as far as stamina goes. The has been a bit slower. I still think it's around that Kieran Conway is uh, winning. Um, good left hook off the ropes from Kieran Conway on Ted Cheeseman. Cheeseman presses forward with the high guard like this. There you go. Good body shot by Ted Cheeseman and then left hook up top as we enter the last minute of the eighth round. Conway backs up on the ropes again. Good right hand there from Ted Cheeseman up top. And a body shot downstairs from Ted Cheeseman. Good uppercut from Kieran Conway. Ted Cheeseman is still pressing forward, but uh, Conway is doing a good job of, of blocking the punches on the ropes. Refer the uh, judges don't want to be scoring that though, so it's important that uh, Conway lets go. Close round, better round for Ted Cheeseman. I still think Kieran Conway just ed edged it. I think uh, he was the ring general. I think he was rendering Ted Cheeseman ineffective and landed the more cleaner shots. So I, I'm gonna give Kieran Conway that round. I got it. Five rounds to three. But I think we're getting into a very interesting period of fight now. I've been extremely impressed with Conway. My man Bola says shout out to Davey Florida. Big shout out to Davey Florida. You know, extra big shout out to the, to the Davey Power, one of the best boxing gyms here in South Florida. You know, producing killers like Tiafimba Lopez and, and guys like that. So with your trainer's hat on, which corner would you rather be in at this Best prospect, Tiafimo, Squani Shakur, Ryan Garcia, Gabe Flores, or Devin Haney. Uh, if of those guys you named, in, in chronological order, I got uh, uh, Lopez 1, Haney 2, Shakur 3, uh, Gabe Flores 4, Ryan Garcia 5. I'm not really big on Ryan Garcia, truthfully. Yeah, round 7 was good. Conway is boxing tonight. 
I think Shannon Briggs can probably take Andy Reid's punch on it. Yeah, Shannon Briggs, if he doesn't have anything else, he has a granite chin. But he has no stamina, so he'll probably just... If he gets stopped, it'll be because he's runs out of gas. But we're here in round nine of Ted Cheeseman versus Kieran Conway for the British Junior World, uh, Super World, World, World Weight title. Right now, uh, like Adam Booth just said earlier in the interview, this is a very interesting part of the fight because Conway's never been this far. Conway sees me showing some signs of fatigue. The referee just warned him for, for putting Cheeseman in a headlock. So Conway has to kind of maintain his stamina and, and, and a good work rate. Cheeseman presses forward and ties up Kieran Conway. And they work it on the inside. Cheeseman misses a couple punches there. Cheeseman with a jab. Man, Conway. Good body shot from Conway. Cheeseman can't find any space in it. He looks gassed, Cheeseman. But Conway is not really trying to get space either. So, so far, not much doing it. Right now, I think Ted Cheeseman probably won this round. Uh, Conway here about I'll get a minute and 25 to steal it from me. Oh, good right hand from Ted Cheeseman. Yeah, there's the, there's very little steam in the Conway and Kieran Conway's punches, so. I think the championship rounds is where Ted Cheetah is going to have a, a really good chance to get up in this man's ass and get him out of there. Because Conway's, you can clearly see Conway's hit the wall, so unless he catches a second win, Cheeseman's going to have a, a really good window to, to do something in these next couple rounds. I got I to gotta win this round as we enter the last 35 seconds. Good defense there by Kieran Conway. Cheeseman presses forward, and Conway's trying to push Ted Cheeseman and Ted Cheeseman ain't having it. It's a war of attrition. And right now, I think Ted Cheeseman's got the fight right where he wants it. To be honest with you, I, I got Conway up, but the fight and the way it's progressing, I feel like it favors Ted Cheeseman. This fight looks painful. Yeah, I'm tired of just watching it. Good body shot by Kieran Conway. Good, good finish to the round by Conway, but uh, I think Ted Cheeseman had the more consistent work. So I got it five rounds to four for Conway as we enter the championship rounds. So essentially what, what this this is now a three round this this is essentially a three round fight. Uh Ted's gotta get a knockdown or win three rounds. Conway's gotta win at least two. On my card at least. I'm sure the judges see it differently. I'll be back. I'm gonna go. Uh, all right. Round 10 of uh, Ted Cheetah versus Kieran Conway. Championship round is very, very crucial part of the fight. Conway on his toes trying to box again. And now he's on the ropes looking, to, looking for a counter, but he, then he ties up Ted Cheeseman. They're tied up again. Oh, good right hand off the ropes there by Kieran Conway. Oh, 
There you go. Good luck. Forget about Kieran Conway. There you go. I want any flush. The pace has slowed down significantly. Right now, I, I got Kieran Conway winning this round. Um, he's landed the cleaner shots of the round thus far. I mean, there's still about half a round to go. Tetchy can still stick, get the round back. But there you go. Better work there from Tetchy than as he presses forward. There you go. Yeah, I think Conway said a wall. Another right hand there from Ted Cheeseman. Oh, some defense, some head move there from Ted Cheeseman as he presses forward. Okay. Okay, Ted. Let's go, champ. Get some smoke. And a jab. Okay, Ted. Fane downstairs. Yeah, I, I think the gas tank, the gas tank and the experience of Ted Cheeseman might be the difference in this fight. Kieran Conway can't get any space to do anything. He's hit a wall. He's kind of squaring up a bit. Not really bending his legs, and that's why he's getting caught with a right hand. Boom. Good, good defense though on the road by uh, Kieran Conway. Is this on the zone? Yeah. His video. His video speaking Spanish. Whose video speaking Spanish? Oh, a left hook there from Ted Cheeseman. All right, so that concludes round 10. I, you know, Kieran Conway had a, a decent start to the round, but Ted Cheeseman really picked it up. Began landing harder shots, landed jabs, showed defense, showed ring generalship. Clear Ted Cheeseman round, uh, the last 90 to 100 seconds of that round. Uh, Clear, clear round for him. So uh, I got it 5 5 a piece. Dead even going into the last two rounds. We'll see. Oh, yeah, Shannon. He was speaking Spanish. Vamos, campeón. Give me a shot, Andy. Give me a shot. Yes, it's on the zone. All right, so round 11, Ted Cheeson versus Kieran Conway. We're live here on True School Sports. It is your boy, BT, Brendan Taylor. Hope you guys have been enjoying the fight so far. Uh, just so you guys know, later on, I will, in fact, be live for the Andrew Cancio. I bet we'll try to rematch, but right now we got Kieran Conway versus Ted Cheeseman. So far, some good action. Uh, right now, uh, Conway started off pretty good, landing some really good shots. That punch out puts increasing a bit. Oh, good up a cut there from Ted Cheeseman, okay. Ted Cheeseman began to move his head. But I can keep that chin tuck though. That chin's coming out a bit. Good jab there from Conway off the ropes. There you go. Good body shots there from Ted Cheeseman. Ooh. Big right hand there from Conway. There you go. Good one two there from Conway down down the down the pipe. Ted Cheeseman with a double jab. And a right hand downstairs. Conway ties him up again. Yeah, been, a, been a very uh, unexciting round. There you go. One two there from Conway. 
And a body shot there from Cheeseman. Very even round going into the last minute. Very even round. You know, good action from both fighters. Good right hand there by Conway. But then Ted Cheeseman falls up with four punches to the body. And he's just outworking the man. The, the, the stamina is too much for Conway. There you go. A couple of good left hooks there by Conway. That land flush on Cheeseman. Uh, tough on the score. Oh man, it's tough on the score. I'm not sure who I give it to. I'm not sure who I give it to. They're probably. I, I thought Conway won that round. Straight up, I thought Conway won that round. I got a six six, but I can see Cheeseman winning that. Round. That's a swing round. I thought Conway won that round. Um, Conway had better punches landed. Uh, he landed about, if not the same amount of punches, um, just under the same amount. He did the better work. Uh, showed good defense. I give I give Conway, I give Conway that round. Nah, I didn't, I didn't hear about that. that. That's true. He's gonna break GGG's contract if he doesn't fight, uh, or Canelo's contract if he doesn't fight Triple G in September. I don't want to see. I don't want to see that fight again. Please spare me. Spare me that. Spare me. Spare me the. Spare me the misery. Spare me the misery. All right. All right, so last round of what's been a, a pretty competitive fight. Kieran Conway has given a good account of himself, and uh, I think at bare minimum, he's established himself on British level. We come out here in round 12, Ted Cheeson whiffs on the left hook. Yeah, yeah, good body shots there by Conway. There you go, good shots on the pipe there from Conway. Cheesy pressing forward, he's trying to smother him and, and get on the inside, but he's getting his punches are slipped, he's getting parried, and de good defense being shown from Conway. I don't think he's getting a decision. I, I, I'll just go on record and say that. No matter how I score this round, he's not getting a decision. But good of a cut there from Ted Cheeseman. That landed flush on Conway. There you go. Got 90 seconds left here in the last round. Good hope from Ted Cheeseman. Conway ties him up again. There you go. Good hook there from Kieran Conway. And up from Kieran Conway. There you go, Kieran Conway. And a pot shot to the body from Conway for good measure. As we enter the last minute. Good left hook there from Kieran Conway. Ted Cheeseman continues to press forward. He lands a, a left hook of his own. Uh, this is a close fight. I wish we would win victory. Oh, Ted Cheeseman's brawling with this guy. He lands some flush punches. Close round. Putting everything into 
Davis. The yeah, three and four Adam for me, Cheeseman. Only one winner, and that's Cheeseman. But still, here at Conway, as you say, certainly. Good luck for Kevin Conway. Man. I get that last round of Conway. I, th I thought Conway won. I thought Conway won that round. So I had, look, my scorecard. I have Conway winning seven to five in a close fight. A lot of, a lot of swing rounds. I think that I think the Sky Sports commentator, like Adam Smith, is being very biased, uh, extremely biased, because Ted Cheeseman is not out here outclassing Kieran Conway. In fact, if anything, Ke Ted Cheeseman should be ashamed of himself that he wasn't that he wasn't blowing out Kieran Conway. Conway seven five, seven five for me. Um, Ted Cheeseman needs a lot of work, man. That, that, that guy needs a lot of work, straight up. I like him, good fighter, but he needs a lot of work. I thought Kieran Conway beat him. Great composure, landed some brilliant flurries on the ropes, beautiful uppercuts. His jab was brilliant. He stood his ground and worked the body nicely. Defended well at times, too. We know how this goes. Andre Sterling outbox Craig Richards. And you saw how wide those scorecards were, so don't expect anything less for Ted Cheeseman. He will certainly go on from here and he'll be back at this level certainly by Listen, if Ted Chi either way, Eddie Eddie Hearn is getting it after I'm done with this live. I'm 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 about to go I'm about to go ham. Really interesting that because I think he'll learn from that Conway. And if he has a full training camp next time and really good sparring, we'll see that again. And as you say that of Anthony Fowler, Scott Fitzgerald, Ted Cheeseman, Kieran Conway has certainly put his name in that mix. He's certainly in that conversation when British title fights and domestic fights are being spoken about and who the top super welterweights in, uh, in Britain are. Kieran Conway name certainly is going to be in that conversation. I think it'll be a big smile from the big cheese now. And it's a big smile from Kieran Conway. It's looking down at you at ringside, Matt. And I, I know you will give him the words afterwards and be fully encouraging of what this 23 year old son but we're gonna get gonna get robbed has won by a fair few rounds let's find out shut the fuck up he didn't win by a couple rounds it was a close fight it was a close fight jesus adam smith up this up these guys asses tonight can't take it today your call let's get a nice here we go here we go oh here we go here comes here comes the bullshit here comes here comes the wide scorecards here we go look, look at this Let's see. Marcus McDonald, 116, 113, Conway. Oh, wow, Conway got one. Okay. Terry O'Connor, 115, 114, Cheeseman. Okay. Cheeseman, the matching fight, he's getting the decision. Bob Williams scores this contest. 114, 114, we have... Yes! They got it right! That, 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 I mean... Wow. Well, everybody at ringside... That's accepted me. I thought Conway won. I thought Conway won, but uh, a, draw is an, a draw is acceptable. So, you know, fair play to the judges. They got the last one wrong, but this one is... Uh, it's, 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 it's a robbery, but it's a small robbery. It's not one to, to get mad about. Um, you know... These these announcers are horrible though. These announce like Adam Smith and uh, whoever the other guys. They're like they're down here talking like Ted Cheeseman outclassed Conway. He didn't do shit to Conway. Conway, Con Conway was in that Con Conway was in his ass. Conway was spinning off of him. He was shielding punches. He was showing skills. Conway, Conway was out there fighting like an Amer like, like, like like an old school American fighter at times. You know, parrying punches, shielding punches. Got the game messed up. And Kieran Conway only had three weeks. He did. He did that to Ted Cheeseman, and, and, and he took the fight on three weeks' notice. Three weeks' notice. So imagine eight weeks. If they fight a rematch, Kieran Conway is gonna box the shit out of Ted Cheeseman. Take it to the bank. Kieran Conway will box the shit out of Ted Cheeseman, Ted, Ted Cheeseman in a rematch. Easy money. Easy money. I, I, I'll, put, I'll bet that's easy money. Because let's see, let's see what Ted Cheeseman and Eddie Hearn have to say. I want to hear what Eddie Hearn has to say. Eddie Hearn might get it bad for me if he says some, some bullshit here. Thank you both for joining us. Come to you first, Ted. Big shake of the head there at the result. You don't agree. This is a little clearer and Conway above a great fight. It's a tough boy. He had a good work rate. But I do believe it. I believe he won by three or four rounds. But look, that's delusional. You're fucking delusional, Ted. You're delusional. You lost. Good luck to Kieran in his career.
catch a team that's away from the ring, uh, recovering from a gambling addiction, you do still keep the British title. Just on that, how does it feel to be back under the lights? It's great to be back there, but look, I've, I let my demons down. I trained like a like warrior, you know, in 14 weeks. I, I put my heart out in there tonight. Foxball, I was relaxing and um, having a muck about in the 11th and 12th. And 12th obviously had a bit more ragged because he was killing my shoulders. Matthew Potter's getting gifts, that's right in the center tonight. Five rounds. You know what I mean? Um, what can I do? It's, it's done now, but I'm going to get I'm still champ, but he I'm was good in the first I mean, four or five rounds, not, Ted, but Trent after Martin. that, he was... Kieran Conway, when Kieran Conway settled in, Kieran Conway was out here fighting like the bootleg Josh Kelly at times. And I mean that in a good way. Let's see what Kieran Conway has to say. It was a good fight. It was our fight. In a number of ways, having been nowhere near this level before, at three weeks' notice, do you actually take it as a moral victory or that you had simply announced yourself on the scene that now everyone knows who Kieran Conway is? Hopefully I've announced myself well on the scene. I've done a lot of box. Um, so I just hope everyone uh, likes what they've seen tonight. Eddie, just clear up the situation on what can happen next. Let's see what Eddie's going to say. No bullshit, Eddie. You better, you better, you better choose your words carefully. Choose your words carefully, Eddie. Oh my god. You fucked up, Eddie. You're on drugs. I don't know what kind of drugs they gave you in the UK. Excellent. Oh no, he's talking about Kieran Conway. He was excellent, yeah. But freaking, you, you want to throw... Ted, Ted Cheeseman versus Scott Fitzgerald? Scott Fitzgerald's going to rip him into an asshole when they fight. He, yeah, he has... No chance against Scott Fitzgerald. Scott Fitzgerald just beat up Anthony Fowler. He just beat up Anthony Fowler. Conway does it. They need to get Conway his rematch, straight up. Andre Sterling needs a rematch, and Conway needs a rematch. Both of them got robbed. I mean, Conway was a little less worse because he got a draw and he didn't get a loss, but Andre Sterling deserves a rematch against Craig Richards. Unbelievable. I won the fight by three or four rounds. Get the fuck out of here, Ted. Are you serious? I don't know. What, I don't know what kind of drugs they're giving you in Bermondsey, but whatever they're giving you in Bermondsey, London, they need to, they need to stop. Eddie, uh, Eddie is in hardcore protection mode since Katie Taylor and Ray Robinson decisions. Yeah, I see that. Horrible. So, the card has been good. The fights have been good for the most part, but the decisions have been horrible. Horrible. Andre Sterling outboxed um, Craig Richards, got robbed on the cards. Then you get Ted Cheeseman getting pieced up left, right, and center. You know, Kieran Conway took the fight on three weeks' notice. Never been anyone to this level outboxing the shit out of him. And, and he, he, he gets a draw. He really should have got a loss, honestly. Disgusted. Absolutely disgusted. Yo, if Eddie has the balls to put Ted Cheeseman and Kieran Conway in a rematch, it's easy money. Conway gonna outbox him. Easy money. That's horrible. Yeah. Um, very it's your boy BT. We're live here on True School Sports. 
for this afternoon's the zone card because um I'm enjoying the live boxing. Been a good um been a good card. Now we have with the results. To give you guys a, a recap of the results, you had um Shannon Courtney won via second round stoppage against her opponent. Uh Charles Franken won in one round against his opponent. Andre Sterling got robbed in a, a clo in a clo in a decision against Craig Richards. Craig Richards walks out victorious. How we find probably Buatzi next, so he's gonna get ironed out. And then uh, Ted Cheeseman had struggles mightily against uh, Ke uh, Kieran Conway, and I thought I thought he lost. You know, I thought he lost. But right now, as I'm talking to you guys, the uh, 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 the next fight is Otha Jones the third, America's very own, Ohio's very own Otha Jones the third. One of the top American stars. He's making his UK debut. I think the British fans are going to love him. He's an, an, it's an exceptional fighter. He's in the ring right now. And in his corner, he's, he's got a flag. And the flag is divided up. It has the British flag on one side and the American flag on the other. So he's really trying to play to that British crowd while supporting you know, his own country in America. So I'm looking forward to seeing old Jones, Jones III. Because even though he's an American, I haven't really seen him fight. I've just heard a lot of great things about him. But he's one, he's one of the top American amateurs Eddie Hearn signed. One of the first ones he signed, along with guys like Raymond Ford. Out of the blue corner, he stands with his head trainer, Rashawn Jones. He wears the gold trunks. He scaled nine stone, 12 pounds at seven ounces. Oh, the Jones. Professional record, thus far perfect. 19 years old. One victory. Representing Soul City Gym and fighting out of Toledo, Ohio. Toledo's very own, Ohio. He is the talented. An exciting young fighter they call OJ3. OJ3. Nice warm welcome tonight. This is his United Kingdom debut. Please welcome Otha Jones III. So Otha Jones III, III is looking to become the, one of the first American fighters that signed with Eddie Hearn uh, to really build himself in the UK. You know, you, you, I haven't really seen many American fighters, uh, that have the, the newer American fighters that have signed with Eddie Hearn. Uh, fight in the UK so early in their career, but this, this is his second professional fight and he's fighting in the UK early trying to build himself in the UK Smart move, so we'll see. He, he's got to impress and the guy he's fighting doesn't look like much of a threat I mean he looks pretty chubby and I mean, we can't judge guys based on look because we did with Joshua But he looks like a regular journeyman, he's got the, language, the body language of a journeyman, so we're gonna see We're gonna see what Older Jones does and I'm looking forward to seeing it myself because I'm an American and I want to see American fighters succeed here we go. Oh, the Jones III in the brown trunks. His opponent in the black trunks with the green trim. Oh, the Jones III. You know, looking to set up a big right hand early. Oh, the Jones. Right hands and left hooks, lighting them up. Jesus. There he goes. Stepping in with the jab. There you go. Over Jones the third. And caught him with a left hook and knocked him down already. Jesus. 40 seconds. Less than 40 seconds into the first round. Oh, the Jones has already put his opponent on the canvas. His opponent gets up. Whatever his name is. I mean, he did not. He's not going to make it this round. This guy's going to get destroyed. Oh, the Jones there comes forward. Gets hit with a jab. Okay. Big left hook from Ola Jones, and another left hook from Ola Jones. Oh, this guy cannot stand up straight. Wait, did he have in the balls? They're saying the, the opponent's saying it was low. I didn't see him hit the blow, so I think his opponent's gonna get some time to recover. Is he? Nah, it's probably mine. The hotel I'm at was trash. Him time. So yeah, they give they give Ola Jones' opponent some time because they say he got hit low. Ola Jones faints, presses forward, jab to the stomach. Big right hand up top by Ola Jones. Right hand down to the stomach by Ola Jones III. Ooh, a left hook out the clinch that lands flush. And hooks. Oh my gosh, Ola Jones. And a big right hand that lays his opponent flat out on the canvas. And the referee has stopped it. 
Otha Jones in the third with that first round stoppage in the UK and a backflip and a backflip. He's hype as fuck. He's super hype. Impressive debut for Otha Jones III in the UK. He improves to 2-0 with two knockouts. Big shout out to America's very own Otha Jones III. I'll definitely be keeping my eye out on him. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Um, Ted Cheetah got a decision, but I, I scored it seven rounds to five for uh, Kieran Conway. Um, and I, I'm really pissed off with how the announcers are so far up Ted Cheeseman's ass talking about, oh, he won this fight by three or four rounds. You got Ted Cheeseman talking about, I won the fight by three or four rounds. Fuck out of here. You won by three or four rounds. You got outboxed. But Ola Jones, you know, on a positive note, Ola Jones the third had a sensational performance at your call. And hopefully, uh, the UK fans are, will take a liking to him and he can build himself out there as well as here in America. We want to see him back here. Yeah, we're looking at following his progress with good interest, talented kid, exciting, only 19 years old, big, big future. Can't wait to see what he says in the interview. I want to see what he's going to say in the interview. I haven't really watched much of his interview, so I don't know what his personality is like, but he seems he seems pretty nice from just judging. He seems like a cool guy. The official time of the stoppage, one minute and 40 seconds of round number one. Your winner, by RSC, he's still undefeated from... Oh, really? That's unfortunate, man. Uh, yeah, I thought, your, I thought your friend won, man. I, I thought Kieran boxed very good. I mean, I, the first couple of rounds, he looked like he was a bit out of his depth. But he, had, he, he, he stayed the course. And uh, he stayed the course. He settled in and he, he started boxing well, man. Uh, he was countering off the ropes uh, with, with, with hooks and uppercuts and jabs. And I, I really think it was a, a, a big injustice. I thought he should have won this fight. And, and the way they're behaving, like, like Ted Cheeseman won this fight by so many rounds, is ridiculous. I thought a draw was a fair result, although I thought Kieran won. But I, I, if there was a guy that deserved a decision, it was your friend Kieran Conway. What a future. Otha Jones showed his opponent some respect, and he actually kind of carried his opponent and told the crowd to cheer for the opponent as well. So, you know, big, you know good sportsmanship from Otha Jones III. Let's see what he says. Let's see what Otha Jones III has to say. Otha, congratulations. Uh, spiteful, brutal performance on your UK debut. Was it everything that you hoped it would be? Uh, yes, man. The, the, the fans and uh, all the cheering. And I'm, I'm, just, um, I'm just welcome in the UK, and I, and I feel at home. I'm just intrigued that at 19, did anybody explain to you what the York Hall Bethnal Green is? What this experience would be about? Have you been through anything like this before? Uh, no sir, no. It's, it's a dream come true. Ever since I was eight years old, I dreamed of this and now I'm here and I'm just happy. The second fight, is that a sign, what we saw tonight, of the future, what's to come from you? Uh, I got better. It's, uh, I give myself a, a B plus. B plus? Yes sir, B plus. Um, I didn't show more angles and, and, and what more of I can do. And I, my next fight, I want to display that more. Not every world-class talented amateur goes on to be a world-class professional. Two very different codes. Why do you think that you've got the tools to succeed? Um, I feel that my, my camp, my brother, my dad, we, we just have to stop all together. You'll have people watching at home in the States. Have you got a message for them? Um, for all the kids in Toledo, the young kids in Toledo coming up, stay out the streets and do something positive with your life. Ohio. Eddie, B plus. He's having a lot. Is it B plus? Yeah, very critical. 19 years old. 
phenomenal talent, phenomenal talent, and a great inspiration from where he comes from. You'll learn more about that as you get to know OJ3 and his family. It's a boxing family through and through, but it's just brilliant to watch a, a young man of 19 express himself like that with so many skills. One of the top amateurs we've seen in the US for a long time. Our stable out there is phenomenal. And it's so good to give them the opportunity, experience to come to the UK and experience fighting abroad in these kind of places. And you know, he had a little injury a few weeks ago. He's, he's been a little bit inactive since what we'd like. In fact, we'll talk. If you want to box next Saturday in Providence, you can box on that card as well. Damn. So we want to keep him nice and active. Eddie Hearn said he wants to box next Saturday in Providence on the Andrade undercard. He can do that. I, I want to see some older Jones the third. He got crazy. <laughs> He's got crazy hand speed, very good left hook, um, good fundamentals, man. Um, I, I want to see some more off the Jones third. It was a brilliant celebration. Yeah, it was a brilliant celebration. So, Ota Jones, he announced himself well and truly here in the UK. Two wins out of two. And in practice, Since Aoka is the first Japanese four way champ, who's the first? Five-way champion Anoe or Tanaka. Tanaka plans to conquer five classes. Said in an interview. Um, I don't. I, I think that, that's a good question, man. A, a very good question. I would. I don't know, man. I don't know. Man, I like Anoe. I think. I think Anoe, when it's all said and done, is going to go down as the greatest Japanese fighter of all time. I think he's that good. Um. So I think. Um. I'm gonna go to Anoe. I want to see Eddie Hearn getting knocked out by Beyonce Wilder. Yeah, a lot of people do. You ain't, you ain't the only one. I want to see him get knocked out just for the for these fucking cards, these horrible scorecards. These judges are. Uh, 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 I don't understand like how they actually thought Craig Richards beat Andre Sterling. Who won the fight? No, Ben. Ben hasn't fought yet. Ben. Ben's about to fight right now, like very soon. Eddie is a bell end, and I prefer fish eyes, and that's saying something. I, I wouldn't go that far. I, I still like Eddie Hearn more. I like Frank Warren, but pissed off this card. The only highlight of this card has been Arthur Jones III. Shout out to America's very own Arthur Jones III. Doing America a great testimony out there in the UK. Ah, so Conor Ben's fight just moments away. I haven't seen a ton of Conor Ben. Um, the one fight I watched of his, I remember when he fought. Um, he fought. I, I seen him fight twice. I saw him fight on the Jacobs Arias undercard, and I saw him when he fought that journeyman and struggled, went life and death with him. I'm not overly impressed with Conor Ben, but I, he's not. I keep an eye out for him. The zone is officially the home of corruption. I mean, I don't know, man. It's getting pretty bad. It's getting horrible. Don't try it around here. We focus on the group, the best one. 
New Castle of Danes Pilsen. As the person responsible for the old beer being dealt with. Probably. I'm just, I'm just checking something real quick, so I'm not, I'm not ignoring you guys. Just, uh, I'm, I'm going to respond to the comments. But we all remember to make a comment during the main event, uh, fight. You know, that's what we do. when new Labrix customers use promo code 23. Right, Hulsey McHulk's face, we've got a race to win. How dare you, my name is Sebastian. Black Brooks, where's that nation, please? The Simba Mattress survives the most rigorous testing because you do more in bed than just sleep. In the dark about your credit score, financial havoc could be lurking. Let us take you and your score. From but yeah, the, um, I dropped the link for you guys in the comments. For those of you who are asking, the, 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 the link is down below. I dropped the link for you guys in the comments. Let's you check and improve your score for free. Hmm, hope he's wearing trunks. I'm just checking the link. Get money, car. Money is too good. Nah. There's a chance. Too late for it. There's always a chance at that back casino. You know, read these things. HMRC is changing the way you find your taxes. Crazy, right? The job isn't being good at tax stuff. It's being good at that. With QuickBooks, you can snap, sort, and store your receipts. Which makes tax filing a doddle. Because after a day of working with needles, you shouldn't be the one in paid. Good books, backing you. Finally! Guys. The Rock has Guys. come Guys. back Guys. to the camp. That's wrestling. <laughs> but yeah, um. We'll be live. We'll, you know what? We're gonna be live, just so you guys know, uh, just programming your mind here on True School Sports. I'm gonna be live tonight, so it's, I'm gonna be live for this Conor Ben fight. I'll be live later on tonight for um, the Machado vs. Kansiri match, also on the zone. Tomorrow, I'll be live for the probably the Paulie Malnagy vs. Artem LaBeouf bare knuckle fight. So stay tuned for that. And then uh, Sunday, I'll be live for the Jamel Charlo vs. Uh, Jorge Cota fight. So lots of fights, lots of lives, lots of. Great times ahead here on True School Sports. Hope you guys uh, join me and, and just join in on all the fun. Should be a lot. Great time. Of the next gen Sky Sports and Match Room in pursuit of the next gen. Why are they showing highlights of Wilder? The heavyweight division is wide open. No, it's not. It's Tyson Fury's division. Tyson Fury is the best. One man just won't be denied. They're showing Dillian White. Oh, this is after Dillian White's fight with Oscar Ibas. And by the way, for those of you wondering, I will 100% be live for Dillian White versus Oscar Rivas. That's going to be a banger of a fight. The link, the link is right up there. See where it says True School Sports? The link is right up there. I dropped the link. The link, the VIP box link. Click on that and you can watch the fight. Wait, is that the link? What a great time to be a heavyweight. Both fighters and fans. The next chapter is White versus Rivas. July the 20th. Pop that date in your diary. Right, though, now to some of the legends. I know he's well experienced. I know he's got you know a lot of fights under his belt against decent opposition. I'm gonna make a statement and you know show. Conor Ben said he's gonna make a statement tonight, so I want to see if Conor Ben can show some improvements. Because I'm not, I'm not, I'll be honest with you, I, I know a lot of people are high on him and they pay attention to him because because basically he's you know the son of Nigel Ben. But I'm not really too, I haven't been too impressed with him. I'll be honest with you, I'm not really too impressed. My left foot will send him to sleep, body or head. Okay, let's get back to our commentary team at ringside. The hell's my...
What's the captain is name again? And now entering the arena, the challenger oh, well. from Tempele, Finland. Please welcome you see the ice. This girl is fine. You talking about Anna Woolhouse, the girl on Sky Sports? She's cool. He's alright. Once again on the road, and once again entering battle first. Finland's very experienced for the European challenger, Yusi Kaguna. Oh, this guy challenged for the European title, so he's gotta be okay. Decent fighter. See if Conor Beck, what, what Conor Beck could do at this level of opposition. That's what they say. They say he's developing nicely, so we're going to see. Son of a legend. That boy's milking that for all he can. Man, everybody on his team got Reebok, classic Reebok on their t shirts. I mean, he's he doing okay. He got sponsorships, he got good sponsorships. Dafabet, Reebok. Doing okay for himself, Connor Ben. He's, he's gonna come out to what? The, the Fuji's? Ready or not, here I come? Ready. You're not. Here I come. You can't hide. The familiar Gonna trials. find you. Y'all don't know about that. You too young for that. <laughs> but I, but I really want to see some improvements with Conor Ben. I'm hoping to see some massive improvements. <laughs> if the link's not working on your phone, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't know what to tell you. Conor Ben. Style and a profile, and he got, he got, he got, he's got me thinking he's actually a great fighter. The way he's walking to the ring, Jesus. No problem, man. I, I, I tried. I, I did what I could. I'm sorry about that. All right, Connor Ben gets a good ovation from the York Hall crowd. Yeah, I, I I remember that fight. He, 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 he was getting destroyed. He was getting lit up. Did they ever did they ever have a rematch? I'm, I'm trying to remember. I, I feel like they had a rematch. Did, did he did they have did they ever have a rematch? Bum City. Yeah, that's what everybody keeps saying. Big stuff for Ben. This guy that he's fighting is apparently challenged for European titles and been in there with some decent fighters. So we'll see. We'll see how he, how he looks these next ten rounds or so. I mean, this is the WBC Continental Welterweight Championship. This is the biggest fight in the history of boxing. Ben won the rematch. Okay, he won the rematch. That's good for him. So at least, at least he wrote his wrong. You know. Wow. I I, I never watched the rematch, but I saw the first fight. I thought he lost the first fight. But they wouldn't let him lose the first fight. They, they, they wouldn't let him lose the first fight because he's the son of a legend. You know? All that bullshit. He doesn't either. You can fight or you can't. Either one or you didn't. You know? Like my main man Riddick Bow says. Riddick Bow always says, cut the bullshit. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the four corners of the world. 
to the four corners of this ring right here in York Hall in the east end of London, England. This is it. The time has come. The fight starts now! Yeah! The fight starts now, David Diamante. The GOAT. First, the challenger fighting out of the red corner standing with head trainer Pekka Maki. He wears the white and blue. Let's go, champ. He's scaled at the welterweight limit of 10 stone, 7 pounds. Bang Shout out to Finland. Shout out to my favorite hockey player when I was a kid, Ole Jokinen. He was from Finland. You know, big shout out to the Florida Panthers, the, lo the local the local hockey club. All right? I like Finland. South Africa. Big shout out to South Africa. Everybody let me know where you're from. Shout out to South Africa. His opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He stands with his head trainer, Tony. Jimmy Davis. Lennon would beat Michael Buffer. The latter has aged badly. Nah, bro. Michael, Bally, Michael Buffer's that guy. He was kind of a dickhead though when I met him, but I like Michael Buffer. Nine wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Ilford, ranked number eight in the world by the WBA. He is the son of a legend. The they keep saying that. Oh, the son of a legend. The UK. Big shout out to the whole UK. I'm talking Liverpool, I'm talking London, I'm talking Manchester, I'm talking about Birmingham, I'm talking about um, just, the, just, just the whole UK, I got mad love for the UK, Manchester, uh, Scotland, Glasgow, England, all that stuff, I'll be there, just, just, just in case I haven't said it enough, I'll keep saying it, I'll be in the UK December the 4th, okay, December the 4th, True School Sports will be heading to the UK, so uh, maybe I'll meet some of you out there while I'm there. I don't know how long I'll be there, but I anticipate that it'll be a good amount of time. So, should be fun when it happens. Connor trying his best to be bigger than Nigel Ben. Yeah, good luck with that one. What about Kent? Okay, shout out to Kent. Oh, big right hand already by the Finland guy. Jesus. You see, ain't playing. He got that. He got that finish. Finish flag on his on his trunks. He just came right ahead and threw a straight right hand. Bang! Another one. Bang! And a jab. He wants all the smoke. Another jab. Just a little fast start from UC. London is in the house. You got it. Okay. Another right. My man, UC. Wants all you see, Kovula. Wants all, he, he he come here to play with Conor Ben. He come in here to iron him out. Someone said Conor Ben's lo gonna lose. I'm calling it out. Yeah, man, he keeps fighting like this. He gonna get ironed out. Another big right hand. Jesus. A left hook from Kovula. And a right hand from Koi Bula. Jesus. Connor Ben's getting his ass kicked right now. Jeez. This is a turret first round so far for Connor Ben. Koi Bula very aggressive. We've seen that before with Cedric Payne. Right now, uh, Connor Ben is getting his ass kicked in the first 30, well, minute and a half of the first round of this fight. Uh, he's getting hit with right hands, left hooks, jabs, and the Finnish guy looks amazing. He looks like the freaking Finnish Tommy Hearns right now. Connor looks tiny. Woo! Another right hand from UC Kovula. Wants all the smoke. Oh man. He's like elbowing him too. I'm not afraid he's wondering about that. So I think he might take a point from him. He's warning him again. Don't do it again. Good jazz this time there by Connor Ben. Uppercut from Ben. Physical early. Good jab there by Connor Ben. Koi Bula using his elbow. He might get a point taken away. Let's spoil what's been a great round for him. Better stop that. 
Ben trying to get back behind the jab. A little bit caught betwixt and between Colin Ben. With whether to box or whether to have a scrap. Conor Ben doing a bit better here, not getting caught as much, using his jab, working behind the jab. There you go. Good right handed by Conor Ben. Alright. So round one, clear round for UC Koivula, um, Connor Ben. You better pick. You better. He better be on his p's and q's, man. Cause this guy, when this guy throws a right hand, he throws it with conviction. He throws it to hurt you. And he's landed a couple times with Connor Ben, and Connor Ben looked shocked. He looked buzzed. So one round, easy money for UC Koivula. My man Adi says Ben will get a hometown decision. I really hope not, cause I don't want to hate. I, I don't like when that happens, man. Cause he, he's already got one. Hopefully he doesn't get another. Otherwise, otherwise his career is a scam. You know, losing isn't a bad thing. Losing can sometimes be a good thing. Some of these fighters need to lose to make the proper adjustments, and he might be one of them. All right, round two. So here we are in round two. Conor Ben versus UC Koivula. Yeah, he has picked. He has picked a, a good step of opponent. I think his best form of defense here is probably to go on the front foot and go on the attack. Yeah, I mean, if he gets through it and he can avoid that right hand and, and, and outbox him or even get a stoppage of his own, then then uh, Connor Ben's gonna gonna show us a lot, you know? Because this is a good, this guy's solid. And he went the distance with the Good job, that like Connor Ben. Like we say, not much of an amateur uh, experience behind him, so he is learning on the job. So we have to be always back to that end when we're talking about him. But we're getting caught with too many shots here again. But Bruno landing a side right hand. Ooh! Oh, good left hook from Connor Ben. Who was that? Connor Ben just hit this guy with a left hook, and he gets like, he was buzzed, and then he kind of just drops the canvas. Did he hit him that hard? Look kind of like a dive. I don't know. I don't want to criticize him. Either. Big right hand over Conor Ben. And a left hook. And a right hand. And a left hook. Oh my God. He gets knocked him down again. Two knockdowns in the second half of Conor Ben. Beating the shit out of this dude all of a sudden. Koi Vula just gets to his feet again. With a minute and 11 seconds here in the second round. Yo. Okay, Conor Ben. He's beating the shit out of him. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Connor Ben. What a sensational second round stoppage of UC Koivula. Wow. Okay, Connor. Got him out of there. Man, he got him hurt and he finished him out of there. Okay, killer instinct. Oh, kill, killer instinct confirmed. Killer instinct confirmed. He lost the first round. Juicy came out. He wanted all the smoke. Connor said, "Okay." He got him hurt with a left hook. Made that boy fall down to his. I thought the first. I thought the first knockdown was kind of a dive, but then he got up and he started hitting him some more. So I knew it wasn't a dive. I said, "Damn, Connor Ben's power is serious." Sensational performance from Connor Ben. Great performance. I gotta give it to him. We get credit. Where, we get credit where credit is due. All of us who are doubting him, let's take it. Let's give us proper credit. It was it was legitimate stoppage. The first he knocked him down twice. The first knockdown hit him with a left hook, and the guy's legs kind of buckled, and he kind of just fell down. It looked kind of like a dive, and then I'm like, okay, that looked kind of like, like a dive. Then he got up and he and he jumped back back, back on him again, and he starts hitting him again with heavy shots, and uh, UC Coivula was very unresponsive to him. So yeah, it was legitimate, very legitimate, extremely legitimate. Two knockdowns, and then the referee waves it off. Uh, I thought it was a, a, a good performance, you know, I think 
he got caught a little bit too much for my liking in the first round, but um, you know he didn't get hurt too badly. He weathered the storm. Um, he looked for his shots. He he made the decision that hey, this guy punches hard, but I can punch just as hard. He he hurt him with the left hook, and. For me, I, no matter what level of boxing, no matter who you're fighting, I always look to see, um, I always look to see um, how you break down your opponents. Can you do you have that killer instinct? And Connor showed that killer instinct. I mean, he showed that killer instinct. He showed the ability to, to hurt this guy. And when he had him hurt, he took his time. He finished him. I mean, big right hands, left hooks, right hand again. Just killer instinct confirmed. It wasn't a dive. That's how 35-year-olds fall down. Yeah, man, you, you might have a point there. Josh Kelly next. What is he, a welterweight? Is, is Conor better welterweight? Kelly versus Ben would be a decent scrap. I think Kelly would take it. I think so, too. But I wouldn't mind it, man. If, Kelly, if he gets Kelly hurt like that, you never know. Could be a good fight. Would be a, it'd be a step down from Ray Robinson, so it'd be a big British fight. What level do you think Ben is best at? Um, right now, I mean, he could be the guy that was European champion, so he show or, or a European title challenger and a, and a solid guy at that. So. Um, I would say right now, Conor Ben is hovering somewhere between just slightly above British level and just slightly below European level. Uh, I don't think we can really answer that because he's still growing, he's still maturing as a fighter. Um, so I don't know, the jury is still out. I, I reserve my judgments, but I'm going to say he, uh, European level, if I had to say right now. Ben's team will never let him take, take that fight, but maybe it's a viable fight in the year two. Yeah, perhaps so. Perhaps so. It could, maybe it could be. So, an interesting, interesting card. I'm waiting for the Conor Ben interview, and then I'll, I'll talk to you guys for like five or ten minutes, and then I'm going to take a nap before this uh, Machado can see if I because I need, I, need, I, need, I, need, I need to lay down. How did Cheeseman do tonight? Uh, I thought he looked pretty bad, to uh, be honest with you. I, I had him losing the fight seven to five. Um, I thought Kieran Conway outboxed him, but uh, what Conway's ultimate undoing was the fact that Conway had never fought 12 rounds. He was fighting on three weeks' notice, and he was fighting a much more experienced fighter in Cheeseman. So I think Cheeseman, if they if, he, if they if they do the right thing and give Conway a, a, a dream match, Cheeseman will get outboxed straight up. He'll get he'll get he'll get outboxed, in my opinion. Let's see what Conor Ben has to say. Let's see what he has to say. Talking to Andy. Conor Ben, what a roller coaster two rounds. Not really sure where we should start with that. Talk us through it. Oh, well, I mean, you come out firing. You know, I tried to front yep. my dad. Cheers, mate. Oh, Take boy. care. And, you know, I knew he was going to come out 35 year old man, thought he, um, you know, could bully me around, but I won't have none of it. You know, at the end of the day, I did stay calm. You know, he caught me some good shots. Didn't phase me, so I thought, Joe, what? Gonna let really let my shots. I told you, I want to get the balance right. He on Colin Ben? Yeah, we'll see, man. Like, um, he's got a lot, a lot to learn in the in the fight game. So I, I wouldn't rush him. They need to take the time with him, let him grow. Oh, I think I did box. You know, I just applied the aggression, my straight shots, my jab. Um, you know, my rolling underneath. But at the end of the day, he was trying to hold me and smother me. So, you know, as I said, you know, we're onwards and upwards. You know, two fights to go, three fights to go. I wouldn't have been able to put, have that display. Um, so, you know, the injuries have done me good. It's about treading carefully, not because I'm not down for a fight, but because there's so much more room for improvement. I'm not the fighter I was when I first started. Far from it. Were you hurt at all? He's a wily veteran. Say that again, sir. Were you hurt at all? He was a wily veteran. Not at all. Not even, uh, like, it didn't even wake me up. Like, it didn't, it didn't do anything to me, so I thought, you know what? 
they ain't gonna phase me. So Tony said, engage when he engages, because I'll be quicker, sharper, and I can hit a lot more harder. So that's why I don't like through when he threw, and you know, call me some good shots. In terms of your strengths, would you say your finishing instincts when you have someone hurt is one of the, the best assets you have? I like to think today was a little bit more calmer than normal. Um, I did think before I threw, believe it or not. Tone was saying up the middle, I think that's the first time I've looked down at the corner when I've had someone down. And, you know, Tone said, yeah, single shot, one shot. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate the fact that you rate me, man. I appreciate all the love. Said Tyson Fury versus Megan Trainer next. That's funny. All about that base and all that good stuff. I think you're playing it down a little bit. That was thoroughly entertaining, but... What is it about pa Pacquiao Thurman's Thurman is a good fight. I got Pacquiao via decision. I think Thurman's training for this fight the wrong way. And I'll, I'll, I'll get into that in later videos, but hiring all these extra strength and conditioning coaches trying to bulk up to beat Pac. Stupid. Stupid. He's going to be a five round fighter when he fights Pacquiao. And that's what achievement. They're proud. Big smiles on their faces. Do you think your dad would be watching that early hours in Australia? I think. Yeah, of course. Your dad would be like, "Con, why did you do this wrong, mate? Your dreads look funny. Why are you walking out to my tune?" <laughs> That's why I made sure I got him out of there. If I didn't get him out of there, my dad would have been like, "You ain't using my tune again." So. Have a quick word, Mike. Are you heard? Eddie, what did you make of that tonight? And what do you want to do moving forward? I think it's brilliant. You know, first round he was like playing old all over again, but he's right. Three or four fights ago, I don't think he would have reacted like that. And he came out for the second round. I thought he might box a move. He just said, no, no, I'm not going to let you push me around. Took it to him. Saw explosive punching. Now he's working on his power. I thought it was a brilliant performance from a guy. Lost in a split decision to Samuel Vargas. Very experienced. You saw how good he was. And, you know, every time Connor goes in there under the lights, he's having to learn. You know, he's not coming off the Olympics. He's not coming off 200 amateur bouts. He's learning here in a spit and sawdust that you'll call Bethlehem Green in front of the TV cameras at the O2, etc. But now he's starting to become... A proper proper fighter and a proper prospect not not nigel ben's son someone who can really fight and tony's molded into a great young fighter you know he said to me after the performance get me samuel vargas and that's the levels that you know we start talking about he wants to fight but samuel vargas so apparently zone, conor ben wants to fight samuel vargas after this conor Ben's always in the danger zone because he loves to fight and he loves to entertain but that's why people love to watch it but now he's getting smarter he's learning he's listening he was injured for a long time he took his time to just watch and realize how much he wanted to achieve in a school. But like I said, now we move into the danger zones, the likes of Vargas and I know Adam Booth's over there, Josh Kelly, that could end up being a massive domestic fight. Eddie Heron just mentioned Josh Kelly. I know we can build that to a big fight, but they've both got to keep winning because they're both going to be in risky fights moving forward. But I just thought that was a brilliant performance, brilliant performance. The danger zone, we enjoyed it, well done. All right, so I'm going to talk to you guys for like five Indeed. minutes. Congratulations to Conor Ben, absolutely stunning performance. Yeah, great performance. I'm not gonna lie to you. I let this fight. I did not. Expect, I didn't expect a whole lot from Conor Ben. To be honest with you, I was, I thought he, this Finnish guy was gonna give him some more problems, and it seemed like that in the first round. But uh, Conor Ben was smart. He got him hurt, and he. I, I leave this fight very impressed with his finishing instincts. So I, I believe that Conor Ben uh, is maturing as a fighter. He is getting better, and that does happen to fighters. Let's see. Let me catch him. Catch him in the comments. Uh, Ideal says he's got. Thurman, that's not, no, there's no problem with that. He's got the style to beat um, Pacquiao. I am mad at that. What do you think are the best fights at welterweight right now? Um, I like Terrence Crawford versus Earl Spence, obviously. Uh, Terrence Crawford versus any PBC fighter. Uh, I like Pacquiao Garcia. Um, I'd like to see Drawn Ennis fight Josh Kelly, but that's not going to happen because Josh Kelly's not ready for that. Josh Kelly, Josh Kelly would get smoked by Drawn Ennis. No disrespect to the UK but our, our our boy Jaron Ennis in Philly, he would smoke Josh Kelly, no doubt about it. Um, no doubt about it. Josh Kelly, I saw everything I needed to see. Josh Kelly still has a lot of room to grow as a fighter. So does Ennis as well. But I think Ennis, I think Ennis is gonna be the better prospect of the two, to be honest with you. Um, I'll be sleeping now. I'll set up an alarm to watch the other live later. All right, Sheehy, I'll see you. I'll see you then, champ. Should be a fun one. For those of you who don't know, later on I'm gonna be live for the um. Andrew Cancio, uh, Alberto Machado rematch. And um, tomorrow, I'm going to be live for the Pauli Malignaggi versus um, Artem Lobov bare knuckle fight. So that, that should be the highlight of the weekend. 
And then uh, Sunday, I'll be live for Jamel, Jamel Charlibur's Jorge Cota. So lots, lots of lives coming up if you guys like the lives. Uh, it's the Marquez fight that this reminded me of. Thurman's counterpunching reminds me of Marquez counterpunching. Yeah, his counterpunching could be the difference. You know, I was, I was telling one of my friends the other night, you know, Pacquiao, I think Pacquiao's going to win. I think Pacquiao's going to outwork him. I think Thurman's going to be a very fatigued fighter because he's doing all these extra strength and conditioning workouts, which, which I think are stupid. He actually brought in an extra strength and conditioning coach for this training camp. So I think it's going to work against him in the Pacquiao fight because he's going to try to knock him out. Um, and when he, when he, when he has no stamina, no gas, and he sees Pacquiao doing this and doing this and blah, 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 and over here, I just think it's going to be a, a, a big problem for him. Alex Jenkins says, uh, I miss Cotto. The guy was a warrior. Cotto was amazing. Cotto was a fantastic fighter. Bilal Ahmed says, Caleb Smith versus Canelo. It's a good fight, man. Um, I, I, got Camelo, I got Canelo on that fight. Straight up. I got, I got Canelo stopping Caleb Smith. A lot of people saying Cheeseman got robbed on Twitter. Casual score fights based on guys throwing punch regardless of where they miss or not. Conway dies or block most of what Cheese threw. I look, I like Ted Cheeseman. Any of you who have ever heard me talk about him know that um, I support him. I like him. But after tonight, man, you know, Kieran Conway outboxed him, um, got robbed. Um, Sky Sports was just so far up Cheeseman's ass. It was, it was, it was, it was despicable to listen to and watch. Um, Cheeseman is a British level fighter to the core at the moment. Like he can, he is not a world level fighter. Like it's becoming more and more apparent by the day that Cheeseman is not a world level fighter. Cause you're struggling with the, you 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 got school by Garcia. Now you struggle with Kieran Conway. You get a draw. Um, and I think Conway, if he gets a full proper eight week camp, he's gonna outbox you. Easy money. He's outboxing Ted Cheeseman. So that's just my take on the fight. I'm gonna go check Twitter here in a second, but um, I gotta go get my nap in. At least at least at least thirty to forty minutes of a nap in. So. Um, I'm going to see you guys later on for the um, Andrew Cancio versus Alberto Machado rematch. I'll be live for that. So hopefully you guys are there. Um, but yeah, keep supporting True School Sports. Um, you guys are going to be seeing a lot more lives. Uh, there's still videos coming out. There's still more Holyfield Bowl stuff coming out. So if you've been, if you've been enjoying that, be on the lookout for that. Um, if you haven't seen the other stuff, go catch up on some videos. You know, If you, if you, if you go, go catch up on some other TSS videos if you haven't already. And uh, that's what it is. Bilal Ahmed says, I feel like I'm the only guy who thought GGG won both times. No, you're not, champ. I thought GGG won both times, too. So don't get, don't get too mad at that. That's why I don't want to see a third fight. I thought he won both times, and they're going to rob him again. And I don't think Canelo will need the judge at this time. I think um, he'll just flat out beat Triple G this time. But that's a discussion for another time. I'm going to get out of here. So like I say in every single video, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys. See you later.